Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and Happy New Year. <laughs> ah, it's so lovely to see you. Welcome to the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yay! <laughs> Today, recording day is, uh, I'm guessing it's Monday. It's Monday. January 1st, 2024. A bright, fresh new year with no mistakes in it, as would say Anne Shirley. She usually says <laughs> it for a bright, fresh new day, but hey, new day, new year, new everything. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. I think it's going to be a nice day at the Beaver Lodge. I did not check the weather report. It doesn't matter. It's a new year. It's going to be a good day. It has to be. you got to get the year off. The year started off right. Right, kids? One would agree, yes. Yes, yes. But... I do not know. I'm guessing Mr. Grizzly has the day off, so I'm guessing we might have a longer than usual show. Yeah, it's uh, New Year's Day. I do have the day off, so I am home today. No work at all, um, other than this, of course. Not uh, not day job work today. Let's put it that way. So yeah, I'm free to free to chat with you as long as uh, as long as you wish, right. or until I run out of coffee and get tired and need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to need a nap. That's for sure. At some point today. And uh, before we do anything else, let's ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today, sir? Uh, you know, sir, uh, I think it's pretty good. I am a little tired. Uh, it's, tried to go to bed early last night and just, we uh, just, I don't know, I, I was ready for bed at like nine o'clock uh, watching a movie and I thought, well, I'll just watch the rest of the film. And then Bridget uh, woke up because she was <laughs> snoring beside me on the couch. <laughs> and she woke up and uh, then I put some music on and then we just started chatting. And she's like, you know, it's about 20 to 12. Why don't we just tough it out and stick around for midnight? So I'm like, okay. So we did. So we turned on the Dick Clark show, with, mm -hmm. which he's no longer part of because he died a few years. But it's what, Ryan Seacrest now, I guess. Yep. So we watched the ball drop in New York City and and watched, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes after that and then went to bed. So I managed to make it to midnight and I didn't think I was going to be able to because I was really tired. We'd had a, a pretty busy weekend. So mm -hmm. how about yourself? Uh, for me, it was a very, very, very quiet New Year's Eve. I was with family over the Christmas week. Right. And uh, unfortunately, I had received news about a friend who was not doing well. Mm -hmm. which um, you know, I tried not to post cryptically, uh, but I did not want to share too much because it's not my information to share. So when people are right. saying, what's wrong? I say, well, 
just, I got bad news and I really, really can't say much more because it's mm. not for me to say what is going on. Because if I do, I'm sharing personal information about someone else that I don't necessarily have the permission to share. Right. And it was bad news. Mm. So, you know, if it was good news, probably nobody would be upset if I was sharing good news. Uh, and it was health related. So always makes things personal. So I uh, came back on the 29th rather than staying for New Year's with family and uh, had some time with my friend, mm -hmm. which was uh, very good and very productive and ended up being helpful, which is good. Yes. And my beaver sweetie stayed with family. So the last few days have been quiet and solitary and alone. And a lot of people worry mm. about that with me. And there is no need to because I kind of like that. <laughs> Little solitude from time to time is nice. Huh? I'm an introvert and I tend to be... I, I don't know how to say it. Not that I tend to be a solitary person. I do like people and I'm gregarious and I'm social, but I really do like alone time mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. and when you're in a couple, you don't necessarily get a lot of it. And when you have spent five, six days in a row with family, <laughs> you get none. And my beaver sweetie's family is wonderful. I love them all to bits. I really do, especially since I don't really have any family of my own. It's really, really nice to go there and spend time with them. But when you go see family, and there, it's not your biological family, but your partner's biological family, mm -hmm. you're on, as I would call it. Mm -hmm. You're oh, yeah. relaxed and you don't do the things that you would normally do at home. So for example, you know, you don't put your feet up on the table. You don't leave the dishes on the counter and say, I'll do them later. You do them now. You say lots of pleases and lots of thank yous. Not that I don't say that regularly, but you pay extra attention and you try to be the most polite and best version of yourself. Which, after five or six days, can get exhausting. <laughs> and you're not sleeping in your bed, and you're not eating the food that you would normally choose for yourself, and you're not keeping the schedule you would normally choose for yourself, and you're not doing the activities that you would normally do yourself. You're participating in what everybody else is doing. So there are, after a couple of days, I hit a limit. And I also get people out. And it's not because they're not lovely. They are wonderful. But you know, I'm sure everybody that's in a couple that goes to the in-laws, you know, it's like, you, it's like, sweetie, yes, they are lovely, but they're your family. Of All course, right. you feel more comfortable. And again, comfortable is the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's been 10 years. Uh, they're just a little bit more at ease. Yeah. Well, they've always known you. Mm -hmm. So they know your habits. They know your behaviors. They know. So you can be pretty much the same over there as you are over here. Whereas the person that's come into the family can't necessarily be. <laughs> okay. So if I'm frustrated for any reason... For example, I'm less at a liberty to let it show. Okay. For example, uh, if I didn't sleep well a particular night, which does happen there because mm -hmm. the room in which we sleep, it's uh, is um, our father, my father-in-law. I say my father-in-law. My sweet, previous sweetie and I are not officially married, but it's ten mm -hmm. years, so I still say my father-in-law. He lives in a beautiful one bedroom condo downtown Toronto near the Eglinton Mount Pleasant area era mm -hmm. uh, with a den, but the den is small enough for a Murphy bed and a tiny bit more. So we're two people, Crowded. 
in that small little room. I tend to run hot. We're both breathing in a small room. The air gets hot. So if you don't sleep particularly well, and my APAP machine wasn't really... I can't say it wasn't working well there, but because I didn't have the place to set it like I normally do. Right. The hose would come undone. The back hose wouldn't stay clogged. If I was fighting with the mask, um, that would involve Sounds turning like on lights. It, it involves turning on lights and waking everybody up. And so there's, so when you haven't slept very well about a mm -hmm. day and a half or two and all you want to do is nap and everybody says, hey, let's go for a walk and then let's go for a movie and then let's play some games. And you think, I just want to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And you're, so at one point you're just like, yeah, ding, ding, this is my stop. I need to go home because I need to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a um, less than stellar time. It's no, it you have to understand. No, it's not it's restful, really is what I'm getting. Time, but it's it's not restful. And as the kits and cups know, I have a rather busy next few months coming up with two shows, mm -hmm. right? And rehearsals. And we're now in the second half of the curling season, and my competitive teams are doing well. So we are in the playoff hunt, you know. The, and one of the plays that I'm in, I'm also producing. Okay. So th th there's a lot. That's one of the reasons why I had to drop choir. For example, I needed to make more time. Mm -hmm. And uh, my beaver sweetie will be taking on as close to a full-time, full course load at the college this semester, mm -hmm. which means we're going to have to be slightly better organized. You know, we're all probably going to have to make weekly plans specifically right like for times he's away and you know preparing tests and whatnot so it, it, it's going and we're still in renovations we're in year three of a one-year renovation well you're about during the please pandemic, so let 2024 be the last year of the one-year renovations that last three years please i can't guarantee <laughs> that that's going to happen i really don't know we don't good know. luck is all i can but say please please so there's a lot going on. So to start off the year, you know, I thought it might be a good idea to have a couple of days rest and mm -hmm. that curveball with a friend. It's, it's one of the, among the harder things you can imagine. You know, mm -hmm. my, my friend had to go into the hospital and, um, yeah. when you don't see it coming. I can't say I didn't see it coming, but the holidays are a terrible time for it. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll come back, you know, we'll spend a, a day or two together. You know, I, 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 I can take care of you for a bit if, if it's needed and it was needed. So, you know, it's, emotionally there's been a lot going on and if kids have been following me as well the last month prior to christmas it seemed that every second day you'd get news of a friend that either lost somebody that they loved a parent mm -hmm. or um or a pet even and uh two friends of mine uh, who had cancer had a recurrence so it, the news has been a little heavy the the last the last month or so and it hasn't necessarily all been good things so you know just a a moment to have a couple of days alone just you know get good night's sleep not be solicited cook some good food eat well you know that type mm -hmm. of stuff so I, I i treated myself to to some good stuff but uh, my beaver sweetie was very worried in the sense that, oh, you're spending New Year's alone. That's so terrible. It's like, no, no, really, it's not. I, I've never been a bar person for New Year's. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's oh, no, been the case the for place. you. 
No. But well, I, I mean, I was because I you were a DJ. Yeah. Right. But I, I remember one year I, I took the I took the year off. I didn't want to DJ that. I just like, no, I want the year off. So I went out with a group of friends and it was horrible. <laughs> it's like, I right? do that again. Horrible. Right? It's so overcrowded. Uh, service doesn't exist because they're running their feet off just trying to keep up. You've got, like I said, it's amateur night. You've got people who don't go out all year who decide that New Year's Eve is the night to go out. Uh, no, it's not. It's really no. not. No, it's I'd rather really just not. stay home. And I'm not a big drinker. Mm-hmm. So you go to a place that's overcrowded where everybody is drinking. A few people are drunk and messy. People are bumping into you, spilling the drinks on you. Mm-hmm. If you like to dance, the, the club or whatever is so damn packed, there is no room to dance anyway. So yeah. yeah Everybody that makes these big plans for New Year's, for New Year's, I either like spending it quietly at home, you know, with someone or with family or having a little gathering at home and uh, that's it. But given that, you know, we had six wonderful days uh, with family, you know, we ate too much. We went on a ski trip. We did as much skiing as was possible to do given the little bit of snow. Yeah. Um, so there were only like two or three runs open at Blue Mountain, the Bunny Hill, and I think two uh, Blue Hills, Blue Coat Hills, which I think are the easiest hills. And uh, the second day rained, so everything was closed. So it was literally board games and card games <laughs> and, and stuff. So it's, um, you know, a couple of days at home where you're not doing anything and you can just take care of you and center yourself and mm-hmm. get ready for the new year. It'll be great. And my beaver sweetie will be coming back today. So you know, we'll do our new year stuff today and everything will be wonderful. Does he go back to work tomorrow? Not tomorrow. No, I think classes start the following week where he teaches, oh, okay. but he's got a week of you know major course Probably, and class yeah, preparation. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's not like he's, so it's not like he's off, off. No, he's not off. And he's still working on the, the paper he's trying to get published as well. So you know, he's got some edits to make to that. It's, you know, it's a lot, but the holidays were, were wonderful. And, you know, even though I did get to go skiing a little bit and I actually had an achievement, Mr. Grizzly. Oh, for the first time in my life, I think this is only like the seventh time I've been skiing in about 20 something years. Mm. So I don't go all that often. Every time I've gone skiing without fail, it never fails. I cannot get off a chairlift for some reason. <laughs> I always fall. I never fall on the skis because I was a dancer. I've got great balance, but I cannot get off a chairlift to save my life. And whether or not it was like one where you hold a T-bar and it comes up, and you know, you're just holding it, whether it's mm-hmm. been an actual chairlift, I always fall at some point, at more at some point, many times, I end up eating snow. I did not fall once. Well, congratulations. You, you've achieved... Uh... Balance, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> so that was an achievement. And my sweetie got me a wonderful Christmas present because we were in Toronto. 42nd Street was playing. I oh, so you went to see it? On the way there, yes. And I've, well, you know me. I love musicals. I love mm-hmm. being in them. And, uh, well, you know. <laughs> It's kind of in the DNA, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm fabulous. So musicals and being fabulous kind of go together. Not for everyone, but for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. So, But 42nd Street is one of those old style musicals, right? Mm-hmm. With like lots of sequins and tap dance numbers. And it's just like, oh, and I had I'm never seen to, one. You no, know, I'm trying to remember that, that because f- there's a film, yes. 42nd Street. As well. Yes. So and I'm blanking. I can't remember the plot. I can't remember the storyline. I can't remember any of it. I have seen it, but it's been Peggy a long Sawyer time. from Allentown, Pennsylvania arrives in New York and she wants to break into the chorus and happens to luck into a show mm. and then ends up the lead happens to break her ankle and somebody has to take over the lead and it ends up being Peggy because she's that good. 
Okay. She's got 36 hours to learn all the leads lead apart before they go live or else 100 people are out of work. And we're talking like 1933. So just out of the depression. Yeah. They des- desperately want to keep everybody employed. Yeah. So, uh, but I had never seen an old style musical ever. Mm. Oh my God. It was wonderful. Hmm. The tap dancing was spectacular. The lady who plays the lead, I wish I could remember her name off the top of my head. She is fantastic. Mm, I'm not sure. She can move her feet really fast, and she can do those those turning sequence on tap, and she Mm -hmm. can just go and go and go and go. It, It was something. It really was something. If you're in the Toronto area and you're looking for something to do, I think it's still on for a little bit. If you have an opportunity to go see 42nd Street, it is really, really, really worth it. I cannot recommend it enough. So I'm a very happy beaver, I have to say. (laughs) Well, you know it's good when you go see a musical and you come out of it and you're singing and you're pretending like you can tap dance. (laughs) No. I don't know what that's like. I've never tap danced at all in my life. So, well, that's not true. There was a little, little, little bit in a show that I did that had a little segment of tap that was really, really, really dumbed down. So I learned like three little steps in order to be able to get through that segment or something. But that was about it. That was Mm -hmm. the only time I've ever had tap shoes on. So, um, yeah. Watching it, it's like, oh my word, I want to take tap now. I want to know, I want to be able to do that. Kind of a dead art, though, isn't it? It is, it is. And a lot of the musicals that people are doing now, especially at community theater, seem to be more, the more modern ones. So there mm-hmm. isn't much call for it, except for example, Chicago. There is some tap in Chicago if you want to do that. But um, I love just the soft knees. It's Take just, your word for it. Oh yeah. Well, you you, you can tell, right? Because you know, it's if if you're really hoofing it, there's different, right? You have to be like have really really soft knees to get the the shuffles and the clack clack clackety clack clack, right? Of tap, and then there's, you know, once you get that, then there's the you know, you can have the the hand position, you know, where you got your hand like this. It's kind of hard to see because the camera's on the weird thing, but mm-hmm. then there's the, you can be rigid, but then there's like the people that have just that little that little softness to it, like this, and little shakes of the head, like the mm-hmm. da da da, like this, and or, right. And I'm just like, it's just so smooth and elegant. And it's like, oh, I want to be that. I want to be that. I want to be able to do that. So, but I don't have time. So, <laughs> but I really, really, it just made me want to do that, especially while I still have the knees, because at some point they give out. So. <laughs> Yes. Um, as, as one will find out as one gets older, the, the knees don't give you what they once should have. Unfortunately, it's just mm. it's inevitable. You know? so, but it's a uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Uh, but it's something. Yeah, it is something I would want to learn. Uh, how about you, Mister Grizzly? How was your Christmas? How was your New Year's and everything? Uh, Christmas was uh, busy, hectic, uh, running around. Uh, a lot of travel, and I was completely exhausted by the end of it, but it was good, you know, saw lots of family, and uh, yeah, um, unfortunately, my uh, sister, who was supposed to come home for Christmas, was very, very sick and couldn't travel. Oh, no. So, yeah, so she and my brother-in-law stayed home because they just, well, she was really sick. They couldn't travel. They didn't want to come and get everybody else sick, so I didn't get to see them, unfortunately. But uh, it was good. I spent Christmas Eve uh, with uh, Bridget and her children, and then Christmas morning, woke up and uh, went to my folks' place, and then went and picked up Bridget around four o'clock, and then went back and had dinner. And yeah, it was good. It was good. Wonderful. I like that. I like that. New Year's Eve was just sitting on the couch watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had went. To, we had gone to I'd, for her birthday. I'd uh, booked just a. Uh, uh, a day at the uh, Lunodic Spa. So mm, that's what we yes. did Saturday. Went to the that. spa, then went to the Chelsea pub for dinner, and then went back to the era to the actually it wasn't an Airbnb, it's just a B and B. 
I went back there and uh, watched a little TV and then went to bed. Yeah, it was good. It was a good weekend. We were exhausted. I did the cold dip, which Ooh. I don't. I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy. I really, I really don't like it. Um, you know, especially as someone who worked in construction outside in the cold winter. Why would I voluntarily make myself cold? But here's the thing. Come on in. Here's the thing. Um, the cold dip, as um, it's it's super relaxing afterwards. So I did the cold dip, and then I went went and sat in the uh, the warm pool in the sanit area, and literally was unconscious for about twenty minutes, which was wonderful. It, it's it's so invigorating, but I don't enjoy it. I'm like I'm gonna stay in, and pe- some people were in there like five minutes. I'm like, no, I'm I'm. 30 seconds is all I can do with that. I'm sorry. And there's a part of me that has always wanted to take part in, you know, the polar dip on New Year's Day. Mm, you know, they nope. chop a hole in the ice. Yep. There's Nothing. no ice this year. Never. Nothing's frozen. Yeah, I know. There's no ice. There's no there snow. Was- there's no ice. It's green grass everywhere. It, it did get cold over the last couple of days. When we were at the spa, it was actually the coldest it had been in a few weeks, I think. So you're, you're wandering around in flip-flops and a bathrobe and you're going from, you know, hot tub to hot tub because they've got like the party zone. Like there's a big chat zone, there's the silent zone, there's the quiet zone, there's, the, um, you know, steam rooms, multiple steam rooms, multiple saunas, there's a yurt. There's, if you've never been, you really should go. It's the largest spa in North America, the Nordic, N-O-R-D-I-K, uh, Nordic, as in Nordic countries, because it's all about cold and hot and, you know, the, the, the uh, invigorating health properties that one gets from doing it. And it, 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 it really is unbelievably relaxing to do the cold dip and then get into the heat and sit there and it'll just, pff, all your, all your cares and worries melt away. But mm. the cold, the cold part is really not pleasant, <laughs> it's, but it's necessary and it works, but it's really not pleasant. Oh, see, I've, I've had no desire to do the cold dip. But I remember when I was in Europe with my uh, beaver sweetie when he brought me to Romania. Mm -hmm. And on the way back, I stopped in Budapest and I went to one of those um, baths, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as they call it. And they have pools that have different temperatures. So they're like like really, really hot water and then medium water. And then they have a cold one. And I was in one of the hotter pools, and apparently you you go you warm up, and then you go dip in the cold one, and then you come back, and then you go back in the hot one. So I did that once, once only, because when I moved, and I wasn't even in the hot one, I was sort of like in the medium one, and then I jumped into the cold one, and I think when I hit the water when I jumped in, I think my heart actually stopped for two beats. <laughs> It's a <gasps> shock, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> I was like, I stayed in like for about 15, 20 seconds. And I said, Yeah, that's enough of that. Yeah, <laughs> and no, I went that's... right back on the hot one. And it's yeah. like, ooh, I don't like that feeling of everything just going <laughs> constricting. It's like, oh man, that's that was a little too much. I, I'm soft. It's not kids. pleasant. I'm soft. <laughs> <laughs> it's not pleasant at all it really isn't yeah yep so that was not uh not 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 something for me and uh yeah i'm a winter boy too which, which is odd because you know i look tropical but uh i'm not i'm not a, i'm not a summer person actually i like you know well you know fall's your least favorite season it's my fall and fall is my favorite but fall spring and I love winter. Yeah, I love cross country skiing. I love curling. I love you know going down hills on inner tubes and all that kind of stuff. I love skating, uh, downhill skiing. I'm kind of getting into, but yep. polar bear dips. Nope, cold water. <laughs> it's just even when we go in the summer up. You know, the couple times that we got go to Grand Bend up by Lake Huron, mm-hmm. that you know sticking your foot in the water and say, yeah, it's a little cold. I think I'm just going to go into my ankles. Thank you very much. That'll be enough. <laughs> and everybody else is swimming and go, yay. I was like, mm. I have trouble getting in. The, there's three parts in my body that are really sensitive. Um, right in the crotch area as the boy bits are about to go in, 
the belly button itself, getting water past the belly button once I get there, like this, and the armpits specifically. So if I just jump so, in, I'm fine. But if I'm like wading in, it's like, it's like every time I get to like each one of these three phases, there's like about like five to seven minutes before I can just like, ah, like taking water and like putting it on it and rubbing and just trying to acclimatize yeah, it's, it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Like I said, if I wanted to do it, you know, there's a part of me that wants to do the polar bear dip just to say I did it. But, uh, I mean, there's no ice, so there's no hole to chop in the ice. So, you know, this is like, that. you know, and it's a New Year's Day. And I'm sure you'll have people that will jump in the river today, uh, no doubt. But it's kind of not the same thing. <laughs> the whole point, a polar bear dip is ice water. This is just cold river right now. It's not, right. a, there's no ice whatsoever. It's just not been cold enough. Right, right. Matter of fact, the outdoor right. rink across the street from me did have a sheet of ice up till two weeks ago, well, by the time Christmas rolled around, everything was gone because it had been raining and above zero for like a week and change. So yeah, wow. yeah it's nothing but mud right now. Jeez. Yeah, we I don't know it, unless it gets really cold for the next two weeks, the canal might not open again this year. Mm -hmm. We were hoping to go skating because we had gotten a one day lift pass. And then the second day we were just going to do activities like, you know, tubing down hills and skating but there was not enough snow to tube down a hill and there was definitely no skating so yeah yeah well the rink of dreams is open at city hall because that's um yeah a refrigerated pad so they can open that they open that actually usually in right or right or right after remembrance day of memory serves and it yeah. stays open i remember when they first built it a friend of mine was like well that's stupid the canal is right next door i go yeah but the canal isn't always open <laughs> yep and last year it didn't open at all. So if you want to go skating, it's free to skate. And they ha they have a sheet of ice at uh, Lansdowne as well, which is also refrigerated. So, oh, cool. Yeah, you yeah, can I sk saw that skate at Lansdowne or or at City Hall. Yeah, I saw that the rink of drinks, the uh, rink of drinks, the rink of dreams was open when uh, I came for the podcast as I was walking mm -hmm. back uh, home. I saw that was open. That's always a nice place to skate, actually. Really you know, is. I've been to it a million times. I've never actually skated on it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh no no! It's lots of fun. I walk by it all the time. I just I just haven't skated on it. Oh, all right. Well, let's get on to some content, if you would. Oh, by the way, resolutions. Do you have any? No. No. Never have. Just uh, try and be a better person each year. That's it. Yeah. That's my resolution. Just well, try and be a better person. That yeah. is definitely a good resolution. I have resolved to make an effort because we talked about it a little bit, to um and err uh, a little less yeah. during our podcasts, which is why I'm speaking a little slower today. To keep, I'm to trying keep up to, to speed. catch myself from yeah, doing You've been doing an outstanding job thus far, so. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, no, I noticed. I noticed. I'm like, wow. it's, it's very, very tricky, I have to say, because it's, it, it's, it's an instinct. Skill, but, you know, it, it is, yeah. Because we want to always fill in the gaps of silence, but sometimes silence is, you know, point right? necessary, especially in a visual medium like this. So when we do the audio, I just shorten the gaps if they're long. So, yes. yeah. Well, I want to make less work for you. So I'm. Thank you. I really? <laughs> I'm going to be busy today trying to get caught up on everything because I got two weeks worth of audio to post. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. All right. Let's say hello to some kits. Let's see who's joined us here this morning. We have Kitla de M. Happy New Year to you and to all of yours, by the way, who are watching Kit My Dogs Are Goth, Kit Elaine, Kit Jillian, Kit Ellen, Kit Elaine. Hello. Oh, I said Kit Elaine already. Well, so nice I'm saying it twice. There you go. Kit Tabby G. Happy New Year to you, dear. Kit Dan, hello, my friend. It's lovely to see you joining us, Kit Saucy. Thank you so much for being here with us. Who else is here if I look in my magic mirror? Ooh, Kit Carol. I think that's a name I've seen before, but not frequently. Mm. So it's nice to have you with us. 
And do we have anything else? I'm just scrolling up the chat list here. Nope, that's who we have this morning. Yeah, looking through the magic mirror and seeing who's there. <laughs> okay, Fran. Fran Papa. <laughs> Bitch never said my name. <laughs> oh, we have our first swear of the year. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. All right. Some news. Um, Japan. I do not know what happened with Japan. 7.6 oh, yes. earthquake, earthquake and uh, tsunami warnings. So, Ooh. welcome to 2024. Welcome to you 2024. Know, it's, it's, I've talked about this in the past, and I'll, I'll wax on poetically about it again this morning, about how, you know, so many people, I can't wait to get this year behind me and start off anew. I'm like, it's just another day, man. Mm -hmm. It's a psychological thing. You think the trees, rocks, dogs, and cats know that it's a new year? No. It's just a, it's just a passage of time. It's significant for a lot of people, but for myself, I'm like, look, nothing changes on New Year's Day. It's nothing changes. It's just the, a clock ticked a few ticks ahead. We're on a different calendar, but it doesn't make any difference to anything else on the planet that lives and breathes other than human beings. It's just another day, man. Yep. I hope that doesn't come off as bleak. I just think I'm being well, pragmatic. Well, it is. It is pragmatic. But I mean, you know, it can be something if you want to make it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the time I'm going to start something, why not? But any day is a good day for that, too. Well, that's my take on it. Uh, you know, it goes along with my, my feelings about Valentine's Day. Oh, i got to take the wife out for this. But why, why couldn't you do that two weeks ago? Why, why didn't you do that last month? Why is it just that one day? Right. You know, I've had strong feelings about that for decades. It's just like, I'm not taking part in that. Sorry. No, no. Yep. I, I've been like that as well with uh, my beaver sweetie. I tell him, you know, it doesn't, the day itself doesn't matter. The, mm -hmm. the only, the only thing that bothers me is when somebody I am going to be with for Christmas gives me my Christmas present early. I mean, if it's a show or something, then, you know, and this happens early, then yes. Mm -hmm. But I do like having something to open on Christmas day. If we are together, I right. don't, if we're not, I have no problem with it happening after. Mm -hmm. I was like, but, but not before, not before. That's about that. The only thing, but anything else, my birthday, Valentine's day, anniversaries, whatever we can celebrate it after. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be on the day specifically. So long as you know, we mark the occasion in some way at some point, I'm good. All right. Things I have learned. I have learned one thing, not particularly news, but it seems that the latest thing on Twitter, if you want to have a block party mm -hmm. and want to attract lots of haters and lots of people who have, let's just say, the most un charitable views possible to offer about their fellow human, fellow citizen. Post anything positive having to do with UBI or basic income. Wow. Oh my word, do they ever come out of the woodwork? Yeah. Well, and you got to wonder, and I, I, I really do wonder this aloud, if that's part of Skippy's bot army that he's paid for, troll Absolutely. bot army. Absolutely. I'm convinced it is. Because the Absolutely. way these people come off, it's like these aren't real there's no way these are real people spewing such hatred over the fact that we're gonna be able to help other human beings. Especially when you consider it was a progressive conservative idea to begin with. Now, the progressive conservative in, in this country is for want of a better term, dead, gone, and buried. It's just the reform party with a conservative name, but it was a progressive conservative ideology. Let's yep. give people a basic income so that they can have their needs met. And guess what? We'll save money. It'll get people out of shelters, off the streets, into a home, into a dwelling. They'll be able to tend to their basic needs. And, and with AI and robotics, there are going to be more people that will need a source of income 
because if you can't get a job because greedy corporations have found a way to avoid paying human beings to do the work that once, you know, one human would do an eight-hour shift uh, five days a week, now they can have one robot do all the shifts all week long. <laughs> what does it cost them? They've paid for it. That's it. No vacation, no sick leave, no benefits, no, no sick days, uh, no family emergencies. So they suddenly have something that will generate revenue for them and it costs them whatever it costs them up front and that's it. They never have to invest any more money into it. Well, a corporation will certainly want to do that. I mean, look, as, as a business owner, you want to try and minimize your overhead. I understand that. But if we have millions of people who suddenly do not have any income, how do they buy the products that you're building with the AI and the bots? Right. I mean, really, if I don't have money, I can't buy anything. It was like at the beginning of the pandemic when they asked Pierre Polyev his thoughts of, you know, what are you going to do for people? Well, we'll give them tax cuts. That's great. But look, if I don't have money coming in, all the tax cuts in the world will not help me. If there's no money coming in because I'm not working, or you don't have enough money to pay significant income taxes, it's not going to benefit the vast majority of Canadians. And he knows this. Of course. He knows course. this. So, yeah, it, it, like you said, you, you try and promote a UBI and watch people come out of the wood. And it, again, people, trollbot army. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And like really, really awful people. There are some people, and it's all the same thing. Remember when we talked about dental and we talked about moral hazard versus moral imperative? Mm -hmm. you know, this is, it's the same argument being made with UBI. You have all these people who are allegedly business owners or allegedly retired. Like, right. I'm not going to pay a single cent if even one lazy person is going to, right? There is no foolproof system. Any system that has ever existed exactly. on the face of the planet has been abused by someone. And someone will do it. And you need to accept that as loss. It's just simple. You and any learn. business person will, will say, no, there's people who are going to cheat, period, because human beings do that. You need to learn to cope, all right? Until we get rid of money, people are going to cheat. So... You talk about UBI and you get a flood of people that talk about slackers, lazy people. And look at CERB. Like, mm -hmm. There's so many people that didn't want to come back to work at CERB. They preferred to stay home and get $2,000 instead of... That's not why people stayed home. After COVID, it was a worker's market. Mm -hmm. People we had wanted tons. to get a job that paid better. Yes. We had people, a lot of people who died. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. We had a lot of people who decided just to retire. Mm -hmm. They took this time. There's a lot of people that moved away to different living arrangements, different cities. There's a lot of people that started their own businesses. There's a lot of people. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of servers, people in the service industry, particular women who were tired of having their butts grabbed. Yeah. There's a lot of people at work left. that upskilled. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. A, a tremendous amount of people did increase their skill set and found a better paying job and just said, hey, I don't have to do this anymore. I can, I can get, you know, middle class nine to five lifestyle. That's all most of us want. Yeah. I just want to join the middle class. Right. With inflation, there's a lot of people who realized going back to the jobs that they had at the same pay wasn't going to be enough to make ends meet. So they mm -hmm. looked for better jobs. There are people that worked from home who liked a better work-life work -life balance, who left jobs that were not going to offer that to them and oh. went to take other ones. There are people who stayed at home and realized, you know what, I did not have a good work-life balance or, you know what, climbing that corporate ladder may not just be as big a priority to me as I thought it was now that I've been away from it. I've been missing out on certain things and you know what? I'm not going back. Or I'm not going back under those conditions or I, I don't want to do that anymore. 
lots of things changed. And we also had two years where we didn't have much immigration Mm -hmm. because borders were closed. Simple as that. Well, I've been looking, tracking the um, numbers for Canadian airports. And you Mm -hmm. look over the last five years and you see the massive dip in 2020. Like massive. uh, From 5 million to 1 million passengers. It's a huge dip. That's just the Ottawa airport. Uh, Pearson, I took, took the biggest, I think took the biggest hit because it's the busiest airport in the country by a large, large mm-hmm. margin. It took the biggest hit. There were still flights coming and going, but, uh, they were, they were shutting down things quickly. And, you know, there was, there was about a three or four week period there where there was almost, almost nothing. Cargo, sure, but not, not much in the way of passengers. So yeah, it's people found ways to, change their life and uh, get better jobs, get better paying jobs with better conditions. And it is now a worker's uh, marketplace. And I've had a number of job offers uh, lately. Uh, and, you know, we'll pay him more money, but pay. I'm like, yeah, that, that would be great. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to do those things anymore. I, I don't, I can't, I, Look, yes, I need more money, just like anybody else, and I should be paid better because of what I do. Um, I'm not going to get into the, the nitty-gritty of it, but more money doesn't always equate to a better life. Right. right. Not always. Right. So you have these people, and I retired, I'm tired for paying people for people who are going to freeload. I paid for them all my life. I, was like, mm-hmm. I would never support, if one person is going to abuse from it, I will never support a UBI. And I think, how selfish narcissistic and arrogant do you have to be to decide that you are going to be the person that is going to deprive hundreds of thousands of people of something that they do need because one person, just one person might get something they don't deserve or might exploit a system when all systems are exploited. And then if you ask them, well, was the CEWS? Was that lazy corporations? Or SIBA? There's Mm -hmm. just been an announcement that there's a program that people have to register for to refinance their SIBA loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there is... uh, This this week or next week it ends or something like that? Yeah, this week. And there's a $20,000 loan forgiveness. Are, are all those people lazy too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, funny how that works out. Huh? Yeah, it, it's, only, it's, it's only when it's the workers are going to get something that they complain. And they're sitting there and they're thinking, oh, I got this comment right in front of me. Yeah, but what about the slacker boom of people who are happy to just sit at home and collect $2,000 a month? We saw that with CERB. <laughs> Nobody wanted to work. It disincentivizes productivity. It's I'm like, 12 bucks an hour to begin with. It's right. not even minimum wage. And I'm like, what about them? I mean, do the math. Right? How much does that add up to in a year? Is that above or below the national low income threshold for a single adult household? Yes. $2,000 a year, 12 months. 2000 a month. 24000 Right? According to a newly published national report by Community Food Centers Canada, Nearly 1 million working age single adults are stuck in a cycle of deep poverty with an average annual income of $11,700, which is less than half of the 25,252 low income threshold for a single household. So we have 1 million working age single adults that have an annual average income of 11,700. That's nowhere near 24,000. And the low income threshold for a single adult household is 25,252. So even if you had a CERB UBI like thing at $2,000 a month, which is $24,000, you still are $1,252 below the low income threshold for a single adult household. Yeah, that's pretty telling, right? It's pretty telling. And that report highlights that nearly half of single adults, 47%, live in unaffordable housing, compared to 17% in other household types and 81% of shelter users 
for single adults with low income. So then if you look at what the average rent is in December 2023, according to rentals.ca, asking rents for all residential property types in Canada averaged $2,174 in November, holding close to the record high in October of 2178. So if the average rent is 2174 and we're talking about a 2000 you're not even covering the average rent. So when the guy says, what about the people who are happy to sit at home? That's literally all they would do if they could afford a home mm-hmm. is sit at home. Because you can't eat. Okay. Great. I, and I paid not for the home. I can't eat. Eat. Yeah. Who would be happy? Nobody. Who yeah, would be it's, happy it's, it's, to sit at home ridiculous. 12 months a year, do absolutely nothing with all that time, not even eat, and still be $2,000 a year in the hole? And you haven't paid your hydro or phone bill or internet. Oh, oh, you don't have any of those things. You just have a roof over your head. Right. Maybe so you're that, lucky and you have one where the heat's included. Yeah. So we saw that with Serbs. You didn't see that with Serb. Now, if all those people actually had $2,000 a month and didn't have to spend at least one third of every day Mm -hmm. figuring out how to cover that $2,000 hole and eat and pay for hydro, what are the odds that they'd be more productive with that time rather than less? How does a UBI disincentivize productivity? There's no way. And that's just the math part. Then add the human nature part. If one person thinks really that $24,000 a year is truly enough to make as many people as it would require to, well, it'll devalue the dollar. Really? To make that many people, as many people that would be required to significantly devalue the dollar, lose all of their humanity lose all of their ambition Mm -hmm. and surrender all of their aspirations. We're humans. We compare ourselves to each other. Who doesn't have a dream? Who doesn't have a goal? Who doesn't have an aspiration? Really? You, you think out of 40 million people, there'd be, a sing- statistically significant enough chunk of people that would say, hey, I've got $24,000 a year. I aspire to nothing more in my life. Yeah, that's no, <laughs> that's not a thing. We're human beings. We are naturally creative. We see things around us that other people are doing. We say, I want to do that too. Mm-hmm. Okay? We all have ambitions, dreams, goals. Again, statistically, there may be a certain very tiny percentage that might be saying, hey, you know what, this is good enough for me, but I don't know very many people. Let's say, you know what? I can barely make rent and I can't have food, and you know what? This is fine with me. Life is good. For the rest of my life, Mm -hmm. however long that may be, I will pursue nothing. I will dream of nothing. I will aspire to nothing. I will become someone that has no ambitions whatsoever. Come on. Come on. And, and These are ridiculous statements. Indeed. Well, and ta- to Tavi's comment to address it, didn't Harper get COVID funds? Yes, he did. He did. And didn't the Conservative Party of Canada yes, take COVID funds? They did. So are they lazy organizations too? Well, you know, not us, not us, just them, just them, not us. Mm. Huh. And as Kid Dan says, I got served, but I did pay over $3,000 in taxes for it. Mm-hmm. So on 24th, yeah, um, the, the minimum tax threshold is something like 9500 and something that you make before you mm-hmm. start paying any tax at all. So even if you got $24,000, you would be, there would be, be some tax on that, so add that to the hole you got to cover. 
And as Kitlin Dams goes, you won't see rich people turning down tax cuts that amount to the same thing. You don't see them saying that that's paying them to stay home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as we discussed with Laura Babcock, it costs money to be poor when all you can afford is the cheap pair of boots that won't last X number of years and you have to buy mm-hmm. it a new pair every year. Yeah, it, it adds up quickly. It's expensive to be poor. It's as simple as that. You cannot afford the quality product, so you buy the cheap one that will suffice and you buy it each year. And after a 20-year period, you've paid 10, 10 to 20 times what your friend has paid for the expensive pair up front. So, you know, it's expensive to be poor. Yeah. And then they'll come back with, well, when I was talking about the average rent, well, $2,178 is an average across all rentals, rooms, four-bedroom houses, etc. Your average poor single renter isn't renting at $2,178 per month. And you know this, which means you're not being take you're not to be taken seriously as you're being deli- deliberately disingenuous. Um, so I went and looked at that rent report thing, mm-hmm. and um, well, here, Mister Grizzly, I will share a screen. I'll have to blow it up, but uh, let's take a little look there. Uh, if you live in Vancouver, a one bedroom average is 2,866. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one bedroom, not one a bedroom. four bedroom when he says it's all average. If you're living in Burnaby, 2680, Toronto, 2594. In fact, of all these cities on this list, you have to get to number 13, Guelph, which is at 2,036, before you get to someplace that's under 2,000, which is Halifax, Nova Scotia, at 1,917. Yeah. Ooh. You're left with $83 for food and hydro. Wow. That should, uh, should work. You're well. living high off the hog there, aren't you? Yeah. Now keep going down this list. Yes. Number 22, Gatineau, 1,739. Whoops. Yeah. That's kind of wild. And if you keep, oh, now it's not cooperating. That happens. So, but if I keep going down this list, Oh, come on, Twitter. Why, why are you doing me like this? Well, we anyway, we still have rent control in idea. Ontario if you're in an older building. It's anything built after, uh, I'll say 2005. I can't remember what the cutoff. Anything built after that, there's no rent control. Because my building was built in 1959, the rent control stays. Doug can't change that. But he hurt a lot of people, and a lot of people have been rent evicted as a result. Now we're gonna we're gonna mm-hmm. renovate your apartment here, uh, and uh, so the rent will be going up. So you'll have to move out. And, and in many cases, all they did was uh, paint the place and then triple the rent. I'm like, there you go. they this don't care about human t- beings. There you go, Mister Grizzly. This one might uh, help with the kits there. So, Gatna, one thousand seven hundred thirty-nine. 28th on the list, Windsor, 1,544. Hmm. Well, maybe you'll get a one week's of groceries out of that. <laughs> Going down, 35. It's the last one on the list, Saskatoon, 1,132. So the average is 1,900? Is that what the it is? The average is 1,931 for the top 35 hmm. regions on this city, uh, on, this, on this chart. We're not talking about people living in four bedroom homes here. So you're going to encounter people who will literally say anything, anything. It has no basis in fact. Mm -hmm. Will the dollar devalue? The dollar won't devalue. We had during COVID CERB. Over the last four years, the dollar has traded within a four cent range. Even with the CERB, because the dollar didn't devalue when we were paying people to stay at home to keep people alive. Mm -hmm. In fact, for part of the pandemic, the dollar actually increased in value and decreased in value after people started going back. (laughs) The value of the dollar was higher in 2021 than it was in 2019. 
Kind of trippy when you think about it. But it was lower in 2023. So, you are going to, if you talk about UBI, if you talk about basic income, and you happen to be online, you're going to attract a whole bunch of weird people that are going to make all these weird arguments. It's BS. It's totally BS. It is pure BS. And all they want to do is is, is wreak harm and havoc. And, and in, like I said, in many cases, I have every valid reason to believe that it's it's the bought and paid for troll army. And in many cases, actual bots, robots, robotic uh, software that do these things. And I've had a few of them where I've argued. And <laughs> it was the one, I don't know, about a year ago, mm -hmm. some guy uh, said, uh, some guy started to threaten me. And I go, well, okay, punk, tell you what, why don't we, why don't you join me at the pub, sit across from me, share a beer with me, have, have a beer with me and we'll have a discussion. And, you, you know, I'll see you face to face. I'm not worried about you. You don't threaten me. I'm not a punk. I go, just just tell me where you want to meet here in Ottawa. Tell me what pub we'll meet at and I'll uh, I'll have a beer. What kind of beer do you drink? And, he, and I didn't get a response for a while and then I finally got a response. I'm really busy right now. Uh -huh. What kind of beer do you drink? And he said, this is what I drink. And I'm like, oh, you're a Russian bot. It was uh, a picture of Miller High Life. I'm like, you're not in Ottawa. I haven't seen that in a bar, a pub, or a restaurant in 30 years. It's not served here. Mm. I don't even think they keep it in the stores anymore. Mm -hmm. So you're clearly not a real human being. Yeah. Have a nice yeah. day. Bye. Yeah. So when you encounter these people, these tweets are bait. Right. Oh, and yes. there's usually something that happens is that you'll present them with the fact and they'll deny the fact or just talk past it. And then you'll tell them they're wrong and they'll say, oh, well, you're being so insulting. It's like, it's not an insult to tell someone that they're factually incorrect when they're factually incorrect. It's not an mm. insult. It's just a statement of fact. And then they move to derision usually. Like this, and you can tell how well you've got under their skin by the number of laughing emojis they put to a statement or the number of times they end a statement with LOL or ha ha. Mm -hmm. Then they try to claim some type of superiority if the, if the later one didn't work, like I won, you're wrong, or they just accuse you of what it is that you've pointed out that's a flaw about them. And if that doesn't work and they haven't given up yet and they're still staying with you because some of them are tenacious, then you know you're dealing with someone who's being paid by the reply. Then they'll generally go for your ego. Mm -hmm. An attack to your ego so that you go, I'm not like this. So there's a playbook. Right? There's a playbook. So when that happens, if you haven't already muted or blocked them, then what you do, and here's the strategy, is you start, if you tweet back the response, you tweet a response not directly to them, but like you're talking to a friend about them. Mm -hmm. People who believe this type of thing, they tend to believe like this, and then you point, nothing makes them more nuts. Nothing makes them more nuts. Then they either give up after a while or then they start flooding you. Nice. For every tweet that you send like this, you get three or four of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's when you know they've just swollen up and fallen apart. Then what you do is you mute them so that they don't know that they're screaming into a wind tunnel. Yeah, that's the After they've part. responded a couple of times, then you block. <laughs> and this leads me to an account that I found, which I really recommend you follow. It's this man named Tim Abray, at Tim Abray, if you happen to be mm -hmm. on uh, Twitter. He's a PhD in politics, comms, communications professional, sometimes journalist. He studies democracy, voters' brains calls himself a settler, class of 1832. <laughs> and he's talking about, he had a tweet thread, and I'm, I'm going to invite him on the show, about 
how to understand Pierre Polyev's approach to scrums. And you can good. apply this to trolls on Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. Similar psychology, especially his troll bot. He goes, some things people need to understand about Pierre's approach to scrums. First, it takes enormous ego and boundless disdain to confidently pursue his approach. Most people would wither under the stress of playing the game he is playing. They would worry about looking the fool. They would worry about getting caught out, choking, ruining their good name forever, but not him. He pushes into these scenarios with relish. He enjoys the obvious confusion and discomfort it causes, but you should know it's actually very cowardly. Here's why. What he is doing is to democratic accountability what pro wrestling is to boxing. There are no rules. He refuses to respect the accountability function of the media, which is essential to democracy. He refuses to answer clearly. He turns the tables. He asks them questions. That's cheating. It's cheating because the media's role is not to debate. Mm -hmm. They are bound by their professional role to ask questions and pursue answers, not debate. He is trying to make them part of the story, but that's like fighting someone who has both arms tied back. Even if they were prepared to engage, he doesn't fight fair. He reaches outside the ring at every opportunity, swinging chairs, gouging eyes, jumping from the top rope. You can't debate that. No. When you're willing to lie, the possibilities for lines of argument are endless. Your opponent cannot possibly be ready when you're willing to grab anything and bludgeon them with it. He fabricates entire lines of argument from the cloth of fiction. Debate is fueled by facts. A debate fueled by fiction is just a choreographed brawl. Sure, you can call him a liar. Done. But that doesn't solve the problem of the substance of the issue at hand. It distracts from it. It turns a debate into a Donnybrook, and that's what he wants. There is no arguing with a prolific and easy liar. Same goes for trolls. They just make shit up after yeah. a while. Yeah. They don't engage with your point, they talk past it, and then they'll just make stuff up. Like, for example, a UBI will devalue the, the dollar. What empirical factual basis do you have that I think it will I think it will do that? That's not why do you think that? Based on what? Do you think that because you just don't like what reality is, so you choose to think something else? Or do you have an evidentiary basis to found that belief? There's, upon got nothing. that makes you think that they're not. They've got nothing. No, so they'll just lie about anything, and if you lie, there's there's no point, right? And there's endless lies. Oh, good God, yeah. So if you counter an argument, they'll just come up with another lie, come up, and they'll keep you in that cycle forever, which is why you yeah. mute and let them scream into a wind tunnel. Yeah, you just just, move or on. you post about them and past them if you're leaving information. For benefit of someone else because mm-hmm. it's perfectly appropriate to use a troll's timeline mm-hmm. against them as an opportunity to leave information and provide education for other people that will fall upon it and then you thank them well this conversation is over but thank you for allowing me use of your timeline to make it edu- because it drives them nuts <laughs> well the, the other one i find that works well for me is i'll ignore them for a few days and i'll go back and go you're here Good God, man, get a life. Like, come on. You're shouting into the void and no one cares. Yep. You're patently wrong and you have no life. And that 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 kills them every time. I have yep. yet to have anybody ever respond to that. Yep. Ever. Yep. They and can't if you deal say and you say, You're not a real person, you're probably not even Canadian. Especially when they like you got one of those profiles, you know, like faceless and it says they're mm-hmm. from nowhere numbers. or there's an American flag, lots of numbers, whatnot. Ooh, that drives them mad. Tell them they're not real. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Engaging with him is a trap. Your frustration and anger and discomfort just gets woven into create a more creative and colorful fiction. But here's the thing. This is all our fault. By treating the serious business of public governance as a blood sport entertainment, we have transformed it into just another ring at the circus. We shouldn't be amused. We should be worried. He's going to break things, important things, fragile things, and we will regret it. Oh, yeah. This man is smart. This man knows what time it is and knows exactly how the game is played. So... When he says, I study democracy and voters' brains, 
He's not kidding. Because that's how those brains work on the troll side. So if you have an opportunity, if you're on Twitter, at Tim Abray, T-I-M-A-B-R-A-Y, definitely a worthwhile follow just to discover them over the Christmas holiday. And uh, we'll be reaching out because, uh, as you know, we like smart and informed people here. Very very much much so. Yes, indeed. It's wonderful. Uh, Let's see what else we have. Oh, this is an important development. Actually, kids. Yes. Uh, A gentleman named Mark Edge, who is a journalist, um, an author of seven books, who's taught in five countries, and is a media, media columnist for Canadian Dimension, has started an initiative that I think you will be very interested in knowing about Mr. Grizzly. Okay. I will put it up here for you and the kids will be as well. You know how the right has this sort of echo chamber? Well, we need one too, Mm -hmm. but not echo chamber style, just a place you can go. So there is now a collective platform where you can find a lot of progressive journalistic outlets. We're not talking shows about us who do news commentary because we're Mm -hmm. not journalists, but actual journalists. So Ababar, Upping the Ante, Ricochet, the Saskatchewan Dispatch, Press Progress, The Rover, The Media Co-op, Progress Report, The Briar Pratch, The New Brunswick Media Co-op, Canadian Dimension, The Maple, The Hoser, Pivot, Midnight Sun, and Independent. The Independent. They have all gotten together on a platform that is called Unrigged. Click on that. So it's a new collective platform that was founded in response to Meta's ban on Canadian news. Because you can't Mm -hmm. find them anymore. So they've created a site unrigged.com i'm guessing it would be here just click that here and see yep uh, no unrigged.ca unrigged.ca so you can go there and that's where they're all collected together now they've started with just about 20 like-minded online uh sorry not 20 unlike but it's basically a news aggregator so all these are together now there will be more like for example the narwhal isn't there at the moment but they've started with these and that they're going to go and reach out to the other ones and try to put them all together so if you're looking for a place to go to get good quality journalism that's not owned by chatham management asset management or other types of organizations that are pumping u.s style Mm -hmm. disinformation into the system that's where you can go and you know we've featured stuff from trillium and our wall and press progress and the national observer and all of those the tie should be on there too yes they're going to approach them but there's a lot of them this these are reputable sources with actual journalists who follow journalistic standards this i will present to you information that is well researched, that is well documented, that is well written, and facts first with sound analysis, which is what we try to do on this show. So if you have an opportunity, you know, just put that into your um, uh, into your web browser, bookmark it, and that's a good place to go. Very important initiative. Hopefully more outlets will join it. Um, I do intend to, to write them. Because even though we're yes, not please. journalists, uh, and try to have them as a guest, but if they would accept us, even though we're not journalists as part of that, uh, this is something that we would be more than happy to join mm-hmm. as well. Oh, yeah. uh, because I'm not sure whether or not they include. It seems to be specifically about journalists, from what I've been reading, which we are not, because we do not go out and dig up stories and create new content. We take content that's created they, by others, and we interpret it for you. They do have a pod. They do have podcasts, though, on their site. Yes, they do have podcasts. So that's why we're like, so I'm saying, depends how broad their definition is going to be, 
But mm-hmm. uh, if uh, they, if it's broad enough that it would include us, this is something that we would be very, very interested in joining. Mm-hmm. But if not, it's probably where we're going to be going to source articles oh, and information, information yes. to, to bring to you. So just so you know. But if you're looking to, for a place to go to get some information like that, so unrigged.ca, that might help you uh, make sure that you're informed because being informed is a choice. Mm-hmm. Well, and I would expect, as you say, the narwhal might, you know, I'd, I'd expect to see the tie and the, nar- the narwhal in, in, you know, part of that network. Yep. Yep. Eventually they go, like I said, they started, uh, they wanted to get it off the ground. So they started with the, the people that were talking together about doing it. And now the, their next step is to reach out to other organizations such as those in order to bring them in. Yeah, there's 20 founding members are in active talks with a number of publications as well as potential supporters to expand the scope and deepen regional coverage. Now, I know that Dean has launched an initiative similar to this. I just, I don't know what exactly is, is taking place. Yes. Well, that's I, I assume thing. you're the, in discussion with him about that, that. That's the thing I was talking about when I said your, your queen beaver might be up to something a little. Um, the Cryer Media has been, Cryer Media Network has been, having a GoFundMe fundraiser to raise $25,000 to counter the uh, slap suit from mm-hmm. the whole proud network. And it has raised over 23,000 so far. It's 25,000 surpassed we, it. He's increased surpassed it to it 50. Exactly. He increased yeah. it to 50. Okay. Uh, yes, I know he's increased it to 50. I didn't, but last time I checked, we were still at the 23,000 something. So I didn't know if he had hit the 25 yet. Oh yeah. I crossed it a day or so ago. Okay. So, the next phase of this is now that he has his 25 to take on is to raise another 25,000 to create something called One Canada. We're basically taking the same strategies that the Proud Networks has used and acquiring it. So, remember when we had the conversation with Laura about practicing the dark arts, mm-hmm. but for good? This is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a one Canada we're raising $25,000 in order to bring that in order to be able to fund the activities. I am suspecting I need to talk more about them, but that the strategy would be as well as to fund probably a one Ontario, a one Quebec, a one because there's Canada proud and there's Ontario proud and whatnot. And to register them as third party organizations so that we could participate in elections as well, right? The spending. Now, when it comes to when the writ period comes, there will be spending limits because third party organizations always have a spending limit. But outside election periods, we could spend all we want. And that would to be able to create some activities and to do some things to help counter the fire hose of bullshit that we're getting. So essentially they're flooding the zone with disinformation and misinformation, mostly disinformation. So we're going Mm -hmm. to try to flood the zone with information. Which is what we need to do. So it's playing the same game, but instead of leaving little piles of dog poop everywhere, flaming bags of dog poop everywhere and actually leave actual true information one of the activities that I, I have proposed is that we start a Lincoln Project slash Midas Touch equivalent for Canada. Mm-hmm. Some short, snappy videos countering the BS that can be going out on a frequent basis, which is the same strategy they use. And we know that mm-hmm. uh, Lincoln Project really got under Mango Madness's skin. Big time. Boy, and we know how easy it is to get under Pierre's skin. All you have to do is call him out on oh, a yeah. lie. Then he lies. Oh, yeah. He, he lies like he's coming down from a drunken rage bender. <laughs> By the way. You know, I was... Dean's kind of pointed it out in an article... And it's like, when he attacked that journalist, mm-hmm. that CP journalist, and we were commenting when he showed up at that synagogue looking like he had spent the night on a 
uh, oh god, I've lost the word now. You know the in the summer when you put clothesline, clothesline. Speed bag. <laughs> I was thinking in French. I'm like, yes. speed yeah, bag. but I mean, he was like, he looked like he was, you know, exhausted, and he he was breathing heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived with an alcoholic for over ten years. Well, let's mm -hmm. say maybe seven when I was in a foster home and then dated one for about four years. I remember them looking like that in the morning. Frequently. And uh, I don't know if losing that's a, their temper. If that's an now, issue. I do not know if that's an issue with Pierre. But But he he, he does look haggard as hell. When he looks haggard, yeah, he I've looks said it. very bad. And that rage snapping is associated mm -hmm. with it and we've seen at least twice in the house of commons where he showed up and just started like belligerently talking and pointing stuff even to mm -hmm. his own staff um and well he does seem to enjoy day drinking you know if 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 this is the case and he has a problem, I hope he gets the help he needs. Uh, it doesn't change the fact I hate him and I think he's a horrible human being. But we have programs in this country that help people, even the ones we don't like, because we're human beings. Mm -hmm. I question whether he's a human some days, but if he has a, a problem with alcohol, I hope he gets the treatment mm -hmm. he needs. Now, the other reason why I'm thinking that this may be an issue is remember Pierre Polyev was getting ready to take part in the Conservative Party of Canada leadership race that Aaron O'Toole eventually won? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he announced that he wasn't. He dropped out. He even mm -hmm. had a date announced and had sent media stuff out saying that he was going to participate. I stumbled upon an article by Montreal Simon on his blog spot. Oh, yes. Very good account to follow as well. MontrealSimon.blogspot.com And um, it's written, Pierre Poliev and the skeleton in his closet. And this one's from Friday, August 21st, 2020. So it's a few years ago. It's an intriguing it's an intriguing Canadian political mystery. Why did Pierre Poliev suddenly drop out of the conservative leadership race? He was a front runner and the darling of the con base. He had been campaigning hard for the job. He had the organization and the money. But just a few days before he was about to announce his candidacy, he suddenly quit, citing family reasons. I never believed that, and now I have become aware of another possible reason, and it's truly shocking. For an in, it, for, in an interview on a popular Quebec morning show a few days later, Bernard de Rainville, who I believe is now, uh, has left the news, and I believe he is actually a member of the CAQ, no, not the CAQ, maybe the Parti Québécois, um, if I remember mm. correctly, I'm just checking, yes, Bernard Dreville, Canadian polit politician, television host, and journalist. He was the member. He was the member of the National Assembly of Quebec for the writing of Marie Victorin Longueuil for 2007 to 2016, representing the Parti Québécois. Since 2022, he is a member of the National Assembly of Quebec for the writing of Lévis, representing the Coalition Avenir Québec. He is currently serving as the Minister of Education. So the current Minister of Education in Quebec. But back then was a journalist for Radio-Canada. For in an interview on a popular Quebec morning show a few days later, Bernard Rainville, the former Radcan reporter and PQ cabinet minister, claimed that he believed Polyev had a, quote, skeleton in his closet, and that he had been told by a, quote, top conservative source that skeleton was bullying. The vicious bullying of top-level civil servants to the point that they were often reduced to tears, quote, and this is a translation of the quote because the interview was in French, quote, he told me that Polyev was ferocious when he met with them. He said he had heard of many meetings that ended with the civil servants in tears after being humiliated so much by Polyev, crushed, insulted, humiliated. Does that sound familiar? 
Have we seen that yes. behavior? Oh, yes. Now, as someone who lived with an alcoholic and dated one, I know that feeling very well. After a big bender waking up the next morning with the hard hangover and coming down just before they have a couple other drinks to bring themselves back to zero. Mm -hmm. Not saying that Pierre Paulier is an alcoholic, but if we're talking about circumstantial evidence, this would go into the pile that would suggest that he is. He told me that he believed the skeleton was psychological harassment. He said some of those victims were threatening to come forward. And maybe that that's why Pierre did not run in the end. And that Dreville alleges was the real reason Poliev dropped out so suddenly. You can hear those allegations on this tape starting around the 6.30 mark. And I'm going to give, um, point this here to Mr. Grizzly to put in the chat. If you happen to understand French, uh, it's 95, at 98.5 FM in, I would guess that this is either in Montreal or Quebec City, but the website is 985fm.ca. And this is uh, from June 24th, 2020. There is a sound clip there that goes from zero to 10 minutes and at around six minutes, 30. But go, if you speak French, go to about the five minute part because there's a lead in that leads to that. And you'll sort of get the story from Bernard de Réville himself explain what it is. And like I said, he does confirm that it's from a very, very, very reputable source that Bernard de Réville would consider credible. And while he didn't reveal the sources, I have no problem repeating what it is said because I believe the source to be very, very credible. Now, I don't know whether that story is true, but Dreville was a highly regarded political reporter and with all his years on the political scene was and still is very well connected. And it's very easy for me to imagine Poliev as an ugly bully judging by the way he has behaved in the past while serving his fellow master, Stephen Harper. And by the way, he is still behaving. For that performance was absolutely disgusting, worthy of a political demagogue playing prosecutor in a fascist court. And the day we normalize that kind of behavior will be the end of Canada as we know it. Now, I admit I am biased. I hate bullies with every bone in my body, and Poliev has always looked and sounded like a bully to me. But it's not me who is making those allegations. If Justin Trudeau had been accused of being a vicious bully, our shabby con media would have been all over him for months like a sweaty blanket. So I expect, yes. no, demand that the media treat Poliev exactly the same way, or they will be sorry. He wrote this in 2020 in 2020 and the media did not treat them the same way and we saw what happened to david in aiken and we saw what happened to that journalist in the orchard orchard and we saw what happened to that lady from cp whose judge whose beat was normally judicial stuff who happened to be there that day so hmm 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 yeah <laughs> yeah when i when i read that uh thread I thought, you know, why why didn't this get more coverage at the time? Mm -hmm. They must. What makes you like? Why why was it just, was left, just left to be mm. ignored for yeah. the most part? Like, wh why is that? Montreal Simon continues to write. They must ask him whether it's true that he humiliated all those civil servants in such a disgusting manner that he made some of them cry. Yes or no? Yes or no? And how many? Yes or no? Just a number, please. Just a number. How many did you make cry? Yes or no? How many drinks did you have today? Yes or no? How many? And if the answer is yes, or is determined to be yes, I expect them to demand that Poliev resign. That ghastly con has acted like a political thug and got away with that for too long, and enough is enough. Update. When I wrote this post, I was not aware of Poliev's rancid misogyny or know about the way he tried to reach out to women hating incels with a secret tag in his YouTube videos. So I assumed that the civil servants he allegedly bullied were men. Now imagine if they were actually women and he was using his position to get his kicks by bullying them. It might be nice if some con media could ask Bernard Réville, who is now Quebec's Minister of Education, more about this story. But I'm not holding my breath. Well. Wouldn't that be so convenient if Mr. Migtow made it a habit 
of treating female public servants and female members of his party the same way he treated that journalist. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. And when you consider that those moments would have happened behind closed doors to the peering public eye, I'm assuming he was much more vicious. I could be wrong. But hey, we're just asking questions. Just asking questions. Hmm. Now, speaking of him, he left us a message for Christmas this year. It was ah, three years old, yeah, though, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you would uh, like to put it up. Yes. Oh, yes. There? Okay, yeah, there it is. Yeah, December 26, 2023. Huh. Real interesting because um, this one here is dated December 24th, 2021. For he so cared about us that he recycled the video from two years ago and presented it as this year's because um, nowhere when he in this on his Twitter feed when he put this on did he say and from two years ago or back by popular demand mm -hmm. he just put it with the day's date now. Um, in this video, again, um, maybe some other reasons why I suspect you that he be. might be. First of all, look at uh, the bottle, how empty it is. 60 answer. Um, and listen to a couple of things he has to say. Now, this is supposed to be a Christmas greeting. Mm. Um, Do we have to watch all four minutes of it, though? Maybe not four, but there. Well, maybe so, because there are some really interesting moments here. Now, I want you to um, pay attention to body language, and I want you to pay attention okay. to the level of Christmas cheer. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Let's see how cheerful this is. No, no sound. no sound. Huh. Send me the link. All right. I will do that. I don't know why that's happening. I, like, you used to be able to, and now for some reason it's just not doing it anymore. I have no idea why. Mr. Grizzly, play me a clip. Bum, 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 bum. Let's see, Polly Afric, he's take a sip. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay, here we go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, we're here with our wow. Polly F family gift Cheerful. to all of you. And it is the recipe for the Better Than Bailey's Christmas drink. And what's the original name, Anna? All right, let's do a clip there. Stop Bunch there. It's inspired by... Okay. Joy to the world, right? <sighs> Merry Christmas. Then the claw goes on top of her shoulder. And that's very clearly not story. Pulls her, pulls her to him. And go back to the beginning. And now, kids, look at her face and look at her eyes as this happens. This. Merry uh, Christmas. Plastic. Merry Christmas. Uh, we're here with our Polya family gift to all of you. And it is the recipe for the Better Than Bailey's Christmas drink. And what's the original name, Anna? Poncho de Crema. It's inspired by a Poncho de Crema. Uh, yeah. Now, 
I'm not one to gossip, so you didn't hear it from me. But that didn't look very affectionate. She didn't look like that was very welcome. And that claw stays on her arm for about the first 28 to 30 seconds. And twice I see a look. One of them is like, if you don't get that claw off me anytime. And then, oh my God, how much longer is he going to keep it on there? in there now of course he told her when she could speak and then she says something and then he interrupts her and then she says that she calls it poncha de crema and watch how he insults her culture but it's heavily canadianized and given new and even better ingredients than the original that anna's family brought here wow <laughs> Uh, from Venezuela. For now look one, at her eyes. Uh, we use the cake, great she Canadian drink, Crown Royal. Yeah. Which now, is probably the most Canadian thing you can imagine. Now remember when he says the great Canadian drink, Crown Royal, because later on she says something that kind of contradicts that. Okay. Imagine invented by a Montrealer, distilled in Manitoba, using great Canadian grains. Uh, but uh, Anna's the boss, and she will tell me how to do it, and then we will share the secret with you. One thing we ask, though, is that once you learn the secret, you're not allowed to tell anybody, because this is a closely guarded secret, uh, and uh, there will be severe penalties for anybody who lets the, these secret ingredients become uh, known. Okay, stop. All right, right. Let's, get, let's get busy. Let's get Did that sound like a joke? Did that look like a joke? Like, normally when somebody says it, hey, because... I'll tell you, but then I'll have to kill you. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no wink. There's no... That literally sounded like a threat. Well, there was no humor. There was no ha-ha. There was no... The, there was nothing about that that seemed funny or light or... That was... <laughs> that. That's just weird. Bree's comment. <laughs> Oh, shouldn't the Russian asset be mixing a white Russian? Ooh. Well, Ooh. all right. So now Anna's going to do all the work. Fine. Okay. So one cup of half and half. All right. You want me to pour? Sure. Okay. I'll pour. You pour. Full cup. Full cup. <laughs> Then one cup of whiskey. You can do Canadian Club, you can do Crown Royal, whichever. Not Canadian. strong though. Or Crown Royal, whichever. Mm -hmm. I'm, guessing, stuff. I'm guessing Crown Royal is the. Uh, <laughs> and it's going to be one can of sweetened condensed milk. Then we're going to move to one teaspoon of instant coffee. You could do caffeinated or decaf. I recommend. And then we're going to do one teaspoon of almond extract, or you can do the vanilla extract, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to do two teaspoons of chocolate syrup. Okay, he's, let me just, let me just stop here. Yep. <laughs> um, it, it's the, the, the abuse of good whiskey that, that troubles me more than anything else. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you're, you're taking crown oil and mixing it with all that stuff. I'm like, oh man, just no, no, no. Everything goes in the blender, then we're going to blend. All right. Here we go. Serious front lender, 500 horsepower. Don't try this at home. Actually do. What do you think? More. I think we're good. 
You get it. Right. Sorry, kids at home for that noise. Quality control, the most important part of it all. Now he's Pinker happy. Bell hit it. Pinker Bell hit it on the uh, head there. What's the point of whiskey if you're going to make pudding with it? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, ouch. All right. Cup. Now, did you notice that? She's trying to get me. Drunk. Yes. Did you notice that? Okay. Is that the one with the poison in the glass? <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. I'm gonna give you this glass. Uh, no, let's switch those glasses. All right. Look at that. Cheers. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, there goes the claw again. Wow. Deliciousness. Couple of variations. If you're having it early in the morning, throw an espresso in it. You what? Can also add a pinch. What did he of, just say? Uh, if you're having it early in the morning, throw an espresso in it. If you're having it early in the morning. That's yeah. I, now, remember when he went to that um, Hanukkah lighting? I mean, fundraiser in mm -hmm. Point Claire. And then he came back at one in the morning after having all his little minions do his dirty work. And mm -hmm. even though daddy was at an event, at a $1,700 a plate event where he got to eat wonderful stuff, he didn't arrange to have something nice catered for the kids or didn't bring back pizza, but Brack brought back McDonald's because apparently that's all they deserved and then filmed himself being greeted like a hero and then sat in the house for a bit and started talking belligerently like yeah. and hmm again it, it's it's, to it's me, entirely it possible like, he may have a problem mm -hmm. it's entirely possible mm -hmm. it's entirely possible you know mm -hmm. not saying he does but the circumstantial evidence is there enough to have us just ask questions. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, Day drink. Oh, let's come on. Cause there's, there's a lovely instance of body language that comes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yes. Watch her try to uh, skip. Cinnamon. And we actually like to give this as a gift. So you can get these bottles of Dollarama and then just pour them. And wrap them nicely, and it's a perfect Christmas gift for your neighbors. Just Very like that. Yeah. As long as you don't tell them the secret ingredients. Again, we, as we said, that is a closely the clock guarded in. secret. Oh boy. And uh, we hope that you, you have that? a great uh, and Merry Christmas. Look forward to seeing you all in the new year. Cheers. Cheers. Merry Christmas. He put the claw around her, and she actually moved the other way. Yeah, I saw that. First. Yikes. Nothing like what's happening right here. What we see right here was going on there. Hi, Douglas. Can you hear? Oh, sorry, you need the other headphones. Uh, I was anybody else really uncomfortable watching that, or is that just me? Looks a bit like a hostage situation. Yeah, it, that that video screamed to me, send the ransom and small unmarked bills. This comment from Tavi G. If you push booze and gambling, you're investing in the future patients for your friends who invested in privatized health care. <laughs> Get saucy. Now we just need a video of Trudeau teaching us how to roll a Christmas joint. <laughs> 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 Honestly, you you make honestly you make me pee my pants laughing. Like, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you should be on stage, honestly. Who <laughs> me? No, Rihanna. Well, you saucy sea witch. Yeah. Oh, Douglas, you are on stage already. You're <laughs> most famous actor in uh, probably Ontario. <laughs> possibly Canada. No, honestly, like I can't wait to. See. What are you playing in next? What are you? What are you doing? Uh, next? As you like it, Shakespeare. Oh, next. nice. And then we will rock you. And then after that, if uh, Nona, Kit Nona, if you're watching, and after that will be arsenic and old lace. 
because Kit Nona told me to see if ever was, if ever was going to be an arsenic and old lace that she would want to come and see that. So yes, that'll probably be in May. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. What a great lineup. Arsenic and old lace. Yeah. Um, as I do sometimes, I'm like, how long is this podcast going to go? <laughs> do you need us? She did so nice. Do you need us to stop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I've been waiting for a tea delivery it, as an arrival. Oh. And <laughs> that's me. I'm supposed to make the tea. Oh. I'm, I'm so just busy. Go make some tea. No. I'm no, busy. I'm kidding. You guys are having so much fun, and it makes me so happy. Like, look how happy you guys are. Mm -hmm. It's New Year's. Aww. It's the first day of a fresh new year. Like, Aww. carry on. Yeah, so I'll take a nap immediately after this. <laughs> Not before you make tea. <laughs> no. Maybe butter and jelly sandwich. Like <laughs> it's peanut butter jelly time. It's peanut butter jelly, 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 time. Time. Peanut butter jelly time. You know, Galantis has a peanut butter jelly song. I played it yes. for her last night. <laughs> Settle down. I love you too. <laughs> uh -oh. We love you. Uh, I uh, I do not have a video of. Um, Justin Trudeau rolling a joint, but there is one of Pierre Burton. <laughs> yes, yes, from a few years ago. Was he on Rick Mercer Report? Is what that was? No, he was with Strombo. He was uh, being Rick interviewed Mercer, by George Strombo. I'm not sure if it was Nick it was Rick Mercer Report or 22 Minutes, though. But yes, Pierre Burton, Canadian author, How to Roll a Joint. Oh, Cassie, thank you. Um, can I show? I, it just came up in my feed. I didn't look for it, but there's this um. In my Instagram feed, this woman is like making lunch for her kids. She's making like a tortilla and she rolls it like it's a joint. Yes, she, I, I sent that to she, you. Yeah, that's right. You sent it. And then she licks it and she's like, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. And here's the funnier part. She's wearing a hijab. Oh. Yeah. It's yeah. A great video. It's like, I'm like, that. I yeah, wish I yeah, could, yeah. could make yeah. lunch like that. I'm like, <laughs> I'll see if I can find the video. It's really oh funny. God, it's so I funny. licked it. It's mine. She's you can't like, have it. It's like 35, you know, mid 30s. She's like, I'm making my sandwich for my kids because I'm a good mom. And then she's like, she's looking at like, just like, that is brilliant. <laughs> it's really funny. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm trying to find it here. Oh my God, I love that. Um, oh, I don't know. If I, I'm, while you're looking for it, do you guys, does it like some of you are from my generation as well, right? Do you remember the the video about drugs? The public it was like a public service announcement. It was With like some drugs yeah. are good and some of them are bad. If you're not sure, ask your mom or your dad. It was like that was pretty pizza tat. Like that was like Health Canada. I was like, good advice. But some I, drugs are good. Some drugs are good. Some of them are bad. Like the one, like I guess, like aspirin is good. Oh, okay. You know, drugs but like heroin. Heroin, yes, yes. not good. If you're not sure, ask your mom or your dad. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, you're, and, but I remember the one about the fried egg too. Like, this is your brain on drugs. Yes. It scared the hell out of me. And I'm just like, oh, really? yeah, that's bad. I was sitting there as I was just looking for toast so I can dip. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, was what they wanted. I think they're like, oh, my brain is tasty. <laughs> Linda, Linda. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things I send her on Instagram. If you see someone crying, ask if it's because of their haircut. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. it's funny. Terrible. terrible. I love it. It's funny though. It's funny. It's terrible. But yeah, I can't I love seem it. to find it. Oh, that's okay. Uh, all right. Um. All right. Hey. Uh, oh well. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't know where it went. Okay. Oh no, I found there it. it. There it is. I found it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I found so it. Funny. Hang on a sec here. Oh. Okay, I gotta, I gotta replay it though. I gotta. <laughs> 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 so, 
Just give me a second. I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, my God. I have a feeling I'm going to laugh myself silly. I'm going to laugh my tail right off. <laughs> Kid Linda, I mean, yeah, mom and dad know all it, the It goes on a loop because it's on Instagram. <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. Oh, I love that. I want to be her friend. She's cool. <laughs> that is a woman with a sense of humor. <laughs> and, oh my god, that's she, brilliant. Like, clearly, her her kids have like the best friggin' lunches at school, right? Mm. They're like, I don't know why. I had my lunch, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that is brilliant. Oh, I love her. <laughs> well, it's like the sense of humor because, again, this is a woman wearing a hijab, right? So that makes it makes it doubly funny. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, does anybody else have like, like the best or the worst? packed lunch like i went to school with some pretty bad lunches sometimes like <laughs> when you could also take peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to school right and then you'd be sitting next to the kid who had like a twinkie you want to like, trade <laughs> trade for a twinkie like i Tuna want a sandwich for a twinkie? so bad <laughs> <laughs> funniest one i heard was bert kreischer his wife was out of town and he had to take his daughters to school and they slept in so he makes them get ready in a hurry, and his youngest daughter grabbed a bag of Uncle Ben's microwavable <laughs> rice. <laughs> so she put the bag of rice in the microwave. It says for three minutes. She put it in for five, so it would be extra hot, and then dropped oh. it in her backpack. Well, she gets to school. <laughs> oh. It exploded in oh. her backpack. Oh, oh my. <laughs> It's, it's a That's funny story. Good. <laughs> I, have, I have full respect for anyone who's a single parent, and I've been one myself. But one of my good friends, is, he's, a, he's a dad, and he has a, a son. And uh, he's like, Rich, like, one day I sent him to school. I'm like, we had no containers in the house. He's like, I grabbed an LCBO bag <laughs> and a milk bag. And I threw like a sandwich in there. And I sent my kid to school with that. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? You did your best. <laughs> like, he had food. It wasn't an alcohol bag. He's like, I know I'm never going to do that again. Cause It'd be funnier if it was, we used to, we used to go to school and, and marble bags were crown royal bags. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Yes. That's true. It that was super common. It was perfect for marbles. <clears throat> Well, oh truth be told, when I was doing work for a cable company and I had to climb poles to fix stuff, I would, I would sling parts in uh, Crown Royal bags and just hang it off my tool belt because you could climb the ladder and they wouldn't fall out because they were closed. <laughs> so I'd get up, open it up and use the parts I needed. It was brilliant. Oh my God. Mm. This, is, this chat is killing me. It's so funny. Like, honestly, like people would throw lobster sandwiches in the ditch because they were poor people's food, right? I'm like... That is like East Coast lobster. It's like <laughs> the most delicious thing ever. And we're like, well, I'd rather right just here. have a Twinkie. <laughs> right here. You got mm. a lobster sandwich? So like, just, well, I mean, not, not the bread, but right here. So just throw the lobster right here. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you one thing about, because I think it's really good when um, Tabby, or sorry, Dan, to your point, breakfast and lunch programs at school, like, go. Oh, I'm not going to say which kid it is of mine, but they went into the uh, school office and this is how funny they are. And he's like, um, they're like, yeah, can we help you? This is high school. And they're like, he's like, uh, can I have an IEP? Like an independent, an independent educational program, whatever it's okay. called. Right. And it's like a specialized, it's like a very long process. And he knew that. And they're like, um, no, you actually have to get like an assessment and then there's this and it costs this much money. And he's like, all right, can I just have an apple then? <laughs> Some cereal? That's great. I'm good with that. And then he just took the apple and the cereal and he walked out. I'm like, you just slayed. Because <laughs> he totally knew what he was doing, right? Playing the oh, system. I can't have an IEP? Well, I'll just take an apple then. <laughs> 
<laughs> just doesn't know where to stand. And I did pack him a lunch, but he's just he's hungry, so he wanted more food. <laughs> oh man, 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 man. Oh geez. Oh, here we go. I've got one for you since we're doing silly stuff. Because mm-hmm. not at all political kids, not at all political. Um, but this is something I saw yesterday that made me laugh like crazy. I'll have to explain yeah, to the kids who are uh, who are listening because they won't see the visual. <laughs> okay, hang on a sec but, here till I cue it up. Let's see if the, you kids notice the funny part in this. Okay, hang on. Oh man! I don't know here. Here. I did something dumb. What? I thought I could wash the bottom of the cup and it just got stuck in there like that. Okay. No! Well, you're gonna have to pull it out. I tried to pull it out. Why do you think I'm calling you? I need a better solution. Your knuckles. No, I know. They're turning white. I'm losing oxygen. I'll get a hammer. No, don't, don't smash it. Oh, let's just get a little soap in it. Okay, but... <laughs> I'm good, actually. <laughs> like, pull it up. Like, what? I'm gonna pull it out. There. Easy. <laughs> what? Don't laugh. If you need help, I'm here to help. I'll save the day. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. For the kids listening at home, she had her hand stuck in the glass and she said, use some soap. She took the hand that was stuck out of the glass, out of the glass to squeeze the scope container and then put it yeah. back in. And he didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen stuff like that done before. It's like it's good. It's a, it's a sleight of hand, and if you're not paying attention, it's like oh my god, I just got, I got I'm a sucker. I got kid Dan, I just peed. <laughs> <laughs> you know there are solutions for that. Um, they this is the stuff that comes up in my feed. It's like hearing aid tests, keg, a Kegel machine. Um, they're like yeah. I'm like, yeah, I guess that's my demographic. I guess they know <laughs> everything about me. <laughs> oh, oh, my word. I'm, I've got nothing. I got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. I got to move on to the next thing because I got something else for you here. Oh, my word. Oh, oh my I'll word. Jeez. This can't be something. <laughs> All right. Um, we have the latest uh, move from conservative MPs to talk about, um, to try and crucify the prime minister on, cry- on carbon pricing here. As you know, um, conservatives have taken to showing what they allege to be some of their constituents' gas bills. Mm-hmm. Yes, I saw that. To show how much, you know, carbon tax there is and everything. So uh, if you put it up, I have it up on uh, on the, the share screen there for you, Mr. Grizzly. So this is Anna Roberts, MP, the member of parliament for King Vaughn. And I've seen this uh, so similar comments from other conservative MPs. And she's uh, showing a bill, charges for natural gas, bill November 19th to December 15th. The customer charge is twenty two eighty eight. The delivery charge is 28 to 34. The transportation to Enbridge is eleven thirty six. Federal carbon charge, $32.21. Gas supply charge, thirty four thirty one. Cost adjustment, seven sixty six. Total bill, one thirty six seventy six plus HST of seventeen seventy eight for one fifty total one fifty four fifty four. So this person is basically getting $34.31 of gas, but paying $154.54 for it, mm. right? And she writes, how will Justin Trudeau explain this to the 88-year-old senior in my writing? $32.31 in Trudeau tax on a $34.31 in natural gas for home heating plus eleven seventy-eight plus seventeen seventy-eight in the H- HST on top of that? You make it, Trudeau takes it. He's just not worth the cost. <clears throat> uh, then I had to go Suzanne Sugarbaker. <laughs> okay. On Anna. 
because uh, this was just absolutely ridiculous. Dear Anna, is it not your job to understand one, it's not a quote unquote Trudeau tax, but a regulatory fee as the Supreme Court ruled? Two, that the net fee given the rebate and the overwhelming of the HST is federal plus provincial tax on the service rendered and not carbon pricing. So you would actually have to take the HST, figure out how much is provincial, how much is federal, mm. and then of the federal, figure out how much of that is on the $32.31 of carbon, which would not would be a very, very small portion of that $17.78. And when you include the rebate, well, that $32.31 that she's complaining about is basically pretty much refunded. And is it not your job as a, quote, skip your quotes, honorable member of parliament to explain it accurately with no lies, exaggerations, or misinterpretations so as to not mislead your constituents? And if I, a mere citizen, can understand it and explain it, why, as a legislator, can't you? You have no excuse. Why does she need Justin Trudeau to explain this when she should be able to? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I just don't know. So, and of course, Anna wants you to be bad at the $32.21 federal carbon charge for which you have a rebate, but not mad at the $28.34 delivery charge or mm -hmm. the $11.36 Enbridge charge or the $34. Yeah, or just, the... yeah, I know. You look at all the charges, it's like, come on, man, come on. It, it, it's the carbon tax one, the one that you get rebated. And if you're one of the 80% of households who's left better off, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the one yeah. they want you to be bad at. Yeah. Well, Don't be mad yeah. at the gas company. Well, it's all the charges over and above. It's like the, the customer charge, delivery charge, service fee. I don't give a shit about you fee. <laughs> it's like if you when you buy tickets for any any event and you go through the the master of tickets, I'm not going to say their name. You see how they gouge the hell out of you. Delivery fee, print fee. But I didn't print it. It's on my phone. Why am I paying to have it on my phone? Yeah. Yeah. And this, this, this to that effect, um, we had old Dan Yeller yesterday. Yeah, I saw There's that. something um, a little interesting. Catherine McKenna, our former Minister of Environment and Climate Change that conservatives love to label as Climate Barbie. My, my former MP. Even though she has retired and is no longer a member of parliament and has been quite a while now, mm -hmm. they still love to attack her. Uh, and um, this uh, Spencer Fernando guy from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation particularly is starting to get under my craw because uh, when it's Melanie Jolie, when it's Karina Gould, when it's Catherine McKenna, when it's mm -hmm. Christian Freeland, he has really, really unflattering things like unhinged and stupid and mm -hmm. thing. very, very particularly abusive to particularly women mm -hmm. in his comments. But here we have Catherine McKenna asking uh, Scott Moe, the premier, because there's an article in the Regina, Regina Leader Post, unfortunate for Saskatchewan to break federal emissions law, says Premier Moe. It's, an, it's unfortunate that I have to do this. Well, you don't have to do this. You could just follow the law. But then again, well, this is a guy that does have three different driving while impaired charges in his past. And so did his son and so did his brother. And mm -hmm. apparently at one point along the way, um, he offered his brother a pardon, which seems to me to be a rather big conflict of interest. Would it be offering your own brother a pardon? Mm -hmm. 
And they got mad when Justin Trudeau wanted to offer a deferred prosecution agreement to SNC. The guy pardoned his own brother. I, I have something to show you here oh, uh, in well, relationship to what you just okay. showed me a moment or two ago. Um, this is from Tavi G. He sent me this, and, and Tavi says, I think there might have been some playing with that uh, bill that you showed earlier. Oh, do tell. Well, look at this. Let me just blow this up so I can Ooh, see it better. Oh, the federal carbon charge. Customer charge. So October 19th, 2022 to November 16th, 2022. Customer charge, 2318. Delivery to you, 2984. Transportation to Enbridge, 429. Federal carbon charge, $17. Gas supply charge, 59.58. Cost adjustment, 869. $143 plus $18.62 in HST for a total of $161.92. Mm. The gas supply charges and the federal carbon charge are very different. Yes. So it makes one wonder if somebody was uh, the HST is a photoshopping. Different. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Somebody photoshopping? Interesting. Makes one wonder. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Manipulating things to suit their uh, Well, we know that Andrew Scheer did their it narrative. a while ago. Yeah. Remember on that motion? Wow. Okay. Okay. Got to support his narrative. Yeah. So. Wouldn't put it past them. Well, 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 no, don't put anything past them. So the Regina Leader, Regina Leader Post says that Premier Scott Moore says that it's unfortunate that he has to break the federal emissions law. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moore once said a fundamental pillar of Canadian democracy is rule of law. His province is now prepared to break it. Well, Catherine McKenna says, Dear Scott Moe, the rule of law is fundamental to our democracy. The disdain you show for it is unbefitting a premier and puts our country on a dangerous road. Mm hmm. Well, Mm. Take there, right? All because you don't want to take effective climate action. The worst kind of politician. So who rides in to the rescue but old Dan Yeller? Let's talk about the rule of law. I would ask the former environment minister to recognize that the Supreme Court and federal court ruled twice against unconstitutional and illegal federal policies. Scott Moe is an honorable premier who has tried using diplomacy many times asking Ottawa's liberals to follow the rule of law. I sincerely hope that 2024 brings a change of attitude and perspective from the federal liberals and how they approach dealing with Canadian provinces under the constitution. Yes, because between her and the federal government is the federal government that needs a change of attitude. Anyway, yeah. um, well, Daniel Smith, Let's talk about the rule of law. Oh, look, she who had that phone call with Archer Pawlowski thought she had she thought she had the power to pardon. Suddenly, has thoughts about the rule of law that she'd like to share to, I guess, put in her place. Catherine McKenna, who in real life is a rather badass, internationally recognized lawyer, from her Wikipedia. Between 1996 and 1999, McKenna studied law at McGill University before beginning her legal career in Jakarta, Indonesia at the firm SSEK, where she focused on international trade, investment, and constitutional issues. In 2001, she moved to East Timor, where she spent a year as a senior negotiator with the United Nations Peacekeeping Mission in East Timor, which culminated in the Timor Sea Treaty, providing for the joint exploitation of petroleum resources and a part of mm -hmm. the Timor Sea. She returned to Canada, where she joined Steichman Elliott LLP, working in the areas of competition, trade, and constitutional law. During this time, she was a senior counsel on the review of Canada's military justice system, headed by Antonio Lammer, former Chief Justice of Canada. In 2005, McKenna co-founded the Canadian Lawyers Abroad, Avocat Canadien à l'étranger, now called Level Justice, a University of Ottawa-based charity that helps Canadian law students and law firms do pro bono legal work in developing countries. Level Justice works to reduce barriers to justice by uniting the power of people, education, and law will lead to create more equitable and just society. She remembers a, she remains a member of the Bars of Ontario and New York State. And shortly after becoming Minister of Environment and Climate Change, she went to a COP summit and she was tapped on the shoulder by the UN to be the person that was leading people to try to bring people together legally. So Danielle Smith thinks that she knows more about the 
law than Catherine McKenna, who could probably actually teach the course. Now, Daniela, girl, take a seat because we've got some stuff for you here. Also, Danielle Smith is lying to you by omission. Sins of omission, deliberate sins of omission, are the same as lying. The Supreme Court of Canada on the IAA was legally upheld. The court provided guidance as to changes required, and the federal government respected the court and made the changes. The law stands as in, and is in effect. So when uh, Danielle Smith here says above that the federal court ruled twice against unconstitutional and illegal federal policies, the Supreme Court of Canada did rule that part of the IAA, which I can't remember off the, uh, something in Ass Assessment Act or something, but I can't mm -hmm. remember what the I is in this one. But according to the summary of the majority in dissenting oppositions, writing for the majority, Chief Justice Wagner held that sections 81 to 91 of the IAA, which create an assessment process for projects funded or undertaken by federal authorities on federal lands or outside Canada, are constitutionally valid. The opposite of what Danielle Smith said. The majority opinion also Funny affirmed bench. that Parliament can enact impact assessment legislation, uh, I, impact, impact assessment act. There we go. Mm -hmm. That is directed at federal aspects of proposed projects. During such assessments, the federal government may gather information about a broad range of potential effects beyond those that fall within the federal jurisdiction. Nevertheless, Parliament must still, quote, act within the ensuring, enduring divisions of powers framework laid out in the Constitution. So what was overturned by the Supreme Court in that decision were portions of the law that the court deemed was not strictly a federal competence. So it overreached a bit. A little bit. That's okay. The federal government said, okay, Supreme Court, we see you. We recognize you. We will re rewrite the act to remove the things that are overreach. And now the law stands. It applies. That was apparently the first thing that they lost, according to Daniel Smith. The second one was the plastics ban. That one went to the federal court. And the federal court ruled on a law that no longer exists in the form on which it ruled, in the form in which it ruled. It was rewritten such that the action brought is more likely to be unsuccessful, hence the appeal. According to a law firm, Macmillan, very respected, mm -hmm. quote, does the decision mean that the addition of PMIs to Schedule One of SEPA has been struck or is no longer in effect? No. Because of the reenactment of SEPA following the order, the order was not in the legislative tool that added PMIs to Schedule 1 in its current form. Therefore, while the decision quashes the order, it does not have the effect of striking PMIs from Schedule 1 of SEPA as it currently, currently stands. In other words, PMIs are currently still listed in Schedule 1 of SEPA. What happened is that the federal government saw certain things were not listed mm -hmm. correctly, and they decided, oh, we need to rewrite that. But because the federal court saw that it wasn't originally and thought, you know what, this is still a good idea to consider as a matter of law so that we mm -hmm. can create the ruling, said it and said, basically, it basically ruled that if those things weren't, were in the original format, then yes, there would be a problem. But the federal mm -hmm. government recognized it before the decision would came down. So the law as it stands doesn't have the thing that the federal mm -hmm. court said was unconstitutional. And that is why Minister Stephen Gilbo is bringing the decision in appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada. Macmillan actually says in its assessment, the consequence of the decision that many are taking away from recent news headlines may be unwarranted as the decision itself does not change the legislation currently in effect, but that doesn't matter to old Daniela. Of course not. Does the decision render the SUP regulations invalid? No. 
since the decision did not result in the striking of PMIs from Schedule 1 of CEPA, which provides Environment Canada with authority to regulate PMIs and enact the SUP regulations, it did not render them invalid. Businesses who manufacture, distribute, sell, supply, or use six categories of single-use plastic products subject to the SUP regulations should continue to comply with the regulations and not make any changes to their existence, existing compliance plans. No changes are required from the companies. Importantly, the SUP regulations arise from an analysis conducted by Environment Canada that identified the six single-use plastics products subject to the ban as problematic plastics. This is the evidence missing from the much broader category of PMIs that the court took issue with in its decision. Had just these six products been added to Schedule 1 rather than the PMIs, the application mm -hmm. may not have been successful. Interesting. So the government did exactly that when they noticed. They included the missing evidence into the much broader category. Mm -hmm. So now that they are added to Schedule 1, this says the application may not have been successful in order to the pitch, the petition to overturn the plastics ban may not have been successful. Again, which is why Stephen Gilbo is bringing that to the Supreme Court of Canada so that the Supreme Court of Canada can rule on the bill as it is now, not with the initial mistake, which is the decision that the Federal Court of Canada gave. And this was basically, well, you know, this matter is interesting enough as a point of law, so let's explore it, even though it is moot. So they wanted to create the precedent and have a ruling, which is important for future stuff, but as it applies to the plastic ban itself, as it is mm -hmm. currently in force, completely irrelevant. You think that the lady who was claiming that they are being oppressed by Stephen Gilbone, who wants a change of attitude from the federal government, may have wanted to be a little more clear on her facts, but then They're again, she just... didn't really know that she couldn't take a phone call from a criminal defendant with a case before the court. So, I mean... They, they just make it up as they go along. They will literally all... lie. They don't care. Literally They'll lie. do whatever they can to win. Basically. If it means again, cheating, lying, stealing, they'll do it. All to publicly score points against the former minister of the environment, mm -hmm. who wasn't even there when these two bills were written, drafted, whatnot, mm -hmm. to discredit her as a lawyer. Yeah, I just don't some days, man. <laughs> I... Total waste of time exasperation political performance art mm. she told the woman who could actually teach the course mm -hmm. that she's wrong yeah. and then of course she says premier scott moe is an honorable man really and an, an honorable man has he's not honorable at all all those past encounters with the law and is currently using the law to crush kids mm -hmm. yeah very diplomatic and honorable very diplomatic and honorable daniel needs to take a seat mm -hmm. mr grizzly do we have a show we do indeed sir all right kids and cups now that's the end of this episode of the daily beaver morning show we hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless and you have the mouse from which we want the good word to be spread so please tell all your peeps and your poops your poops of peeps your peeps of poops 
<laughs> all of all of the above. All of the above about our show. Um, we are getting lots of traction uh, on some of our Christmas episodes, Christmas week mm. episodes. Our interview with Neely Kaplan Mirth has really taken off. Yeah, I, I was looking at the Dean's numbers on Twitter, so I'm like, holy crap. And we are getting lots of compliments about it. Um, please take Some hate mail. Some hate mail. We do Which was expected. Happen. We yep. knew that was going to happen. Also, please take some time, if you haven't, if you missed some episodes. We also have an interview with a lawyer named Douglas Judson, who was basically at the forefront of a very important precedent-setting case mm -hmm. with regards to defamation and anti-slap suits. Who basically had a court rule that in Ontario, it is now illegal for people to call people they don't know, random strangers, pedos and groomers because they support either the drag community or the transgender community or the rainbow mm -hmm. community. That is literally now a crime. And if somebody goes to court and says, well, I was just exercising my free speech, the court has ruled that there's pretty much no positive social value to mm -hmm. that type of speech. And therefore, if you were going to use it as a defense against a slap action, it will not be accepted. Which is good. Now, only Ontario and British Columbia have anti-slap and slap legislation. So clearly it's not coast to coast to coast yet. But at least in those two provinces, assuming that the decision in Ontario would be used as a precedent in British Columbia, technically you could sue mm -hmm. if that happens. So uh, people have to be a little careful what they do there. Um, please take some time to listen. It's a very eye-opening and engaging interview. Yes. And it's definitely worth your time. Um, our interview with uh, Neely Kaplan Mirth is a little, I will tell you right now, if you missed it, a little heavier than our usual fare because, you know, we like to laugh and, you know, have some tongue-in-cheek stuff and be we a little sarcastic. Uh, there, there was, was none, none of that, that there. Uh, yeah. It was a very, very, very serious interview about a very, very serious subject. Uh, she's been the victim, uh, the victim, the target, because she's not a victim, clearly, uh, of a lot of uh, anti-Semitic attacks. And uh, but uh, she's standing very, very strong against them. And it, mm -hmm. if you listen to the interview and hear everything that she's faced. <sighs> Hats off. Yeah, still standing, still standing tall and strong in, in the face of vicious, vicious hatred. It's and just, defiant. Uh, and defiant. Uh, not, not backing down at all. So uh, these are two very, very important interviews with some very engaged citizens that are uh, doing some very good things for the benefit of us all. So if you have some time to listen to them, and uh, the three other episodes that we did were 2023 Year on Your Review episodes. So if you have a chance to listen to them, if you missed them, uh, they're available for you on YouTube. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay, we did the sharing is caring part. So let's then say, if you would not like to miss an episode at all, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl, who has sponsored our pod page. So if you scan that QR code beneath my chin right here, that will take you to podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you like subscribing to the things, make like Kit Elaine and go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page, where we have gained a lot of subscribers over the last little bit. I think we're over mm -hmm. 540 now, which is, uh, again, the fastest that we've gained. 545. 545. Uh, so thank you very much. We had um, some good fortune over Christmas with an old tweet of mine um, talking about uh, some important facts that could be used to counter a conservative party BS on the strength of the economy, which somehow got a second life. Somebody retweeted it and then just got fire and got another like 16,700 retweets or something. And that drew a lot of people to the channel and to our, our Twitter feed over the holidays. So um, thank you for whoever spread that around. We really appreciate it. We didn't expect that, but it happened and it led to, to a lot more subscribers. So 
Thank you so Thank much. You. As well, so there, if you're on our True, uh, True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page, uh, you can like, share, and subscribe, as Kit Elaine likes to uh, remind you to do, and that helps us a lot. Also, if you would like to support us and encourage us to do more, you can go to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And that's where you will find our tip jar for the True North Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. Uh, I don't know if you could put the coffee squiggly up there, Mr. Grizzly, but if you do that and leave us a little something there, that helps keeps us hydrated and that makes sure that uh, we can keep on bringing you this wonderful content that you love. And uh, the kits were very generous to us in December. It was our best month. So thank you for all the Christmas support and love. And we have to thank in particular because we had pre-records uh, for the end of the year. Uh, the people who had made some donations over that time. So we have... Well, Kit, the Ray Girl, thank you very much, who said, have a beverage of your choice on me. And Kit, oh, you told me how to say the name, and I haven't said it in so, while, in so long, so I think I forgot it, but I will say Aina. Uh, and if I got it wrong, please remind me again, who said, and this was a very beautiful comment, thank you for the interview with Nilly Kaplan Mirth. I have so much admiration for her. Your interviews are so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, we let our guests do most of the work, to be totally mm -hmm. honest. We do our interviews. Yeah. But, Just have uh, a chat and let them open up and, and have a conversation. Yeah. But thank you for your support. It uh, helped us close off the year very, very well. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Looking forward to, uh, to another record-breaking 24, thanks to you and your support. A uh, big thank you to our founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfit Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com, because democracy is something that you do. Go get your shots, XBB, flu, your pneumococcal vaccine, your RSV shot. Very, very important. Uh, donate to the Red Cross if you can, and write those letters to your MPs or MPPs asking for a national food program in schools and demanding increasing accountability from the leader of the opposition, who seems to be avoiding it a lot of late. From the Beef Watch, this is your eager beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Self-serving words of wisdom, because uh, I noticed the anti-corporatist had uh, commented on how he's looking for soothing relaxation content from time to time to help him sleep. Well, here's the self-serving part. I just put the link in the chat to my personal ASMR YouTube channel where I will be doing a show live at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the nation's capital of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Feel free to join in. And uh, there's, there's a good group of people that join in the chat. And... Oh, um, and I want to thank all the people who have boosted my uh, subscribers' numbers. It was at 689 two weeks ago. It's now at 1,460. Are you doing so ASMR? I've, yeah, I've doubled my numbers in like two weeks. So Whoa! thanks for everybody for sharing that. I'm, I'm, I'm truly humbled. Honored, sorry. I'm truly honored. Honored. It was, it was big. It was big, yeah. I was not Good expecting that. You. I was very much surprised. It was like, I just, you know, checked it the other day and I'm like, what, what, how, how is that happening? <laughs> that is wonderful. Yeah. Bring yeah, some so of that magic just, over to ours. Oh, sorry, 1,470. So I just wow. got another 10 while we've been online. So Dang. Yeah, it's, it's building. It's building. It, the, the problem, I think the problem with it is when you click on it, it takes you home and it shows the for you and then past live streams. And then if you go down to the video list, like I've, some videos have 10, 10, 10 12,000 views, but it's the live stream that doesn't get as much. But I, I prefer doing the live screen, stream so that way we can have the chat and the conversation and, and then you can tune it in later. You know, you can watch the, the, the go back to the live feed. I'm starting to cut them and put them into the video feed as well. But just trying to drive people to the live, the live stream because it's more interactive, right? I understand you can't always do it. You know, you can't always join in. Nine thirty on a Monday is a late for a lot of people. So if you can, if you can pop by, you should check it out. I think you'd like it. 
hey, well, you're at the, you're at the face now that you'll be getting, you know, about eighteen dollars per thousand views now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good I for to, you. I, I am so happy for week. you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's like well, I was telling Bridget, well, I'll incorporate soon, and then it's like, oh shit, uh, I got to do that very soon because I'm, I'm suddenly over that hurdle. So. Okay, well, yeah. until such time as you do, um, just include it as part of TNNB and, you know, we'll, we'll separate it so that way you're, you're protected. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll figure it out. But uh, yeah. yeah. So it's, That's it, it, beautiful. It's, it, was, it was a big surprise to me, like a very big surprise to me. I was not expecting that, so. I am so proud of you. Way oh, to go. Thanks, thanks. Good work. So, so it's coming together slowly but surely. You know, it's taken a little couple of years worth of work. And uh, you know, I started this during the pandemic. And there's my, there it is right there. For those of you Look who are curious. Look at that. That's 1.47K. Yeah, yeah. Almost, almost 1,500. Dang. Uh, it's one short I used to, I just put it in, in, in uh, like YouTube ads and they, 186, 70,000, 2,864, <laughs> You know what? The Christmas season was probably the best time to actually do that. Yes. Um, especially when you consider what the channel is all about, right? Uh, yeah, It's exactly. about mental health and, and people who are uh, suffering, battling issues at, at Christmas time. I think a yeah. lot of people sort of tune into that. They just, They need a place to go to somebody to talk to and... Yeah, there's, there's a good group in the chat, and and like I said, it's it's coming together. It's getting better. Yeah, um, so I'll continue yeah. to to build that. And uh, thanks, thanks to good everybody for you. who uh, good for you, good for you, well done. Out. Thanks, well done. Oh, and kids, if you've been sharing the word about uh, the SMR channel, thank you. Yeah. Oh, so thank you, thank you, Cassie. Thanks, Pink Bell. There you go. I just subscribed. There you go. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, Mr. Grizzly rolls the credits, and uh, we have two cute little Easter eggs for you. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver Podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. All right. Oh, and by the way, special thank you to uh, Paul Joseph something for our new music. I hope that uh, you like it, kids. All right. Two little Easter eggs. Uh, one is from uh, our trip where um, uh, Mr. Beaver, um, I think, had a personality transplant for a little bit and became Mr. Kitty. Uh, was that the, the, the screen you have in the share there? Uh, no, it's uh, the first Easter egg I've sent you a... In the, in the, oh, the there chat. it is. There it is. Sorry. Yes, it's the first bear one. With me. Bear with me for a sec here while I blow it up. Okay. Here we go. It's uh, this one here, I believe. Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. We were at Sunset Point and something happened. Oh, okay. We'll do this one first then. Oh, okay, uh, that was uh, William Shatner uh, posted a. Don't you dare put that on me. Let's not forget that in 1983, Lucas introduced Ewoks that started. Not only that furry movement, but the dyslexics among us started woke culture from them too. <laughs> Somebody had quoted uh, to, to William Shatner, uh, said, I put on Star Trek V last night to fall asleep, which didn't work, but I think it might be safe to say that William Shatner may have inadvertently started all this furry nonsense back in 1989 with this thrice-breasted cat stripper on Nimbus III. <laughs> um, not, no, 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 no. That is incorrect. Everyone knows it as I who started the furry movement when I was born in the early 70s. <laughs> Down here.
<laughs> okay. All right. That was and good. then we have the other one for you. For, uh, which, I, which is the other one? See the one that says it. Easter eggs specifically. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out which one I've got here. Is this the wrong one? I, I, I might have missed it. Ah, there we go. It? Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. No, it? I got it. I got it. Yeah. Just bear with me. Something happened. I don't know why it went, but very weird. <laughs> I'm laughing at the video. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll blow it up. Um, this is just, this is just pure silliness. <laughs> we were walking uh, by sunset sunset point you know on the georgian bay and they had little trees that had christmas balls there and all of a sudden i just couldn't resist <laughs> turned into a cat did you <laughs> impressive well, ball me, handling <laughs> makes Thanks me think of this Isabel. In your own words, how would you describe libertarians? House cats. They are convinced of their fierce independence while utterly dependent on a system they don't appreciate or understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids and cubs. Have a beaverific day. Happy New Year. Thank you for kicking it off in style with us. It's only water, but cheers. I'll see you. <laughs>